Well, yes. say I or <laughs> Commissioner oh. Athenson. Thank you. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Swenson. Aye. Chairman Peretz. Yes. Aye. Commissioner Berg. Aye. Commissioner Preschlack. Aye. Commissioner Moyer. Aye. Commissioner Ransom. Aye. Aye. So that passes, and uh, thank you for our, that little experiment in parliamentary procedure. We will go into an executive session. It's expected to take about 15 minutes, and so we apologize for that delay. And then we'll be back, and we'll have our normal agenda. So thank you, folks. All right, good evening and welcome to the uh, June, it's not the June, it's the uh, January 25th meeting of the Lake Forest Historic Preservation Commission. The commission is here tonight to work together with all of you, property owners, neighbors, and architects to continue the tradition that was established nearly 40 years ago in this community. That tradition is a review process that allows community members to work together to preserve the qualities and unique character that make Lake Forest a special community. City of Lake Forest is committed to conducting open and democratic meetings. To achieve that goal, meeting procedures have been adopted by the commission. A copy of the procedures is available at the back of the room on each agenda. It's, as always, it's the intent of the commission to help manage the development and growth of the city of Lake Forest with a keen sense of preserving the historic structures and open space in the city for all its present and future residents. Our goal is to move each petition before us tonight through the review process as quickly as possible while balancing the interests of the petitioners, neighboring property owners, and the larger community. Uh, so thanks for the delayed start here. We'll do a quick introduction of the commissioners. Susan Athenson. Mary Ellen Swenson. Guy Berg. Kurt <coughs> Peretz. Fred Moyer. Bill Ransom. Jim Preschlag. And uh, so you got to meet us twice. Um, uh, we are going to go to the first item, which is approval of minutes. I have meeting minutes for both the October and November HPC meetings. And um, I think we can do these together. I do have one correction for you, Megan, in the uh, page five of the October meeting. where it says that I said on the last line that the gardener's cottage is more handsome than the carriage house. And I believe that I might have said that, but I probably didn't mean that. <laughs> I, I, and you can decide how you want to record it, but I believe that I meant the carriage house. I think I've had a penchant for reversing those two names in that uh, proceeding. So you might want to take another look at the tape. You can approve, put in whatever I said is what I said, but... Um, I have a couple other typos I'll give you, but nothing significant. Has anybody else got any comments? All right, I will ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes of the October 26th and November 11th, 2011 meetings as with suggested change that the chair made. <laughs> Thanks for the humor on that. Uh, motion's been made by Commissioner Ransom. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Swenson. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any opposed? No opposed. Thanks. The meeting minutes are approved and we'll get on with our first real uh, substantive issue here. We have a request for certificate of appropriateness for a revision to approve plan as it relates to window placement and additional dormers at 990 North Sheridan Road. Um, so come on up and uh, let's hear your uh, petition. I think that we've actually seen this before, and I think we've asked if there's been any uh, ex parte conflicts. Do I'll ask one more time. I'm not sure if it was <coughs> no. the same guy. So, so we're good. Thanks. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Austin Dupre. I'm the architect representing the owners for this property. Uh, we've been under construction for about four months now. Uh, we came back 
Uh, we were before you uh, earlier this fall, I believe, uh, late August. Um, this house at 980 North Sheridan uh, is undergoing a significant renovation and like many renovations uh, has evolved uh, during the past three or four months and the owners have elected to invest more in the property and at this point um, like the chairman said we're coming to discuss the windows and some additional uh, dormers that we're contemplating for the project um, so again to familiarize everyone here uh, Sheridan Road uh, the Winter Club is immediately adjacent to the south uh, here's an image of the existing front facade from last summer and the rear facade. Uh, the main um, uh, parts of the renovation focus on removing this uh, sunroom that was added uh, in the later 70s. The house was constructed in 1974 and probably be classified as a, as a builder's colonial, kind of an eclectic mix of uh, different styles, uh, French and American styles. Um, side facade, uh, north facade here with the uh, addition that was removed, uh, and another shot of the rear facade. Uh, this fireplace was also uh, taken down to the foundation, and a new fireplace was located at the north side of the house. Um, these were the existing four plans uh, and the new proposed four plans. So. As part of this uh, renovation work, uh, the owners uh, have elected to build out uh, the attic space. Um, so a new uh, stair was uh, placed and right now we're requesting uh, for this one larger dormer uh, facing west and three individual dormers uh, facing east that you'll see in uh, the, run in the uh, elevations. Um, Again, existing elevations, just so everyone can understand it diagrammatically. Um, front facade windows, uh, you'll see in the next few slides, rear facade that was changed. Um, these were the plans that were approved at the last HPC meeting. Um, we're showing here the original double hung windows that were in place, um, both on the uh, front facade and rear facade. Um, this is a new bay window that was added off of the new family room. Uh, and again, the, the garage elevation and then uh, south elevation, north elevation, mainly unchanged with the exception of this new chimney. Um, the current plan and request before the commission this evening is to add these three dormers up above, um, really responding to the lack of any kind of detail at this large roof plane. Um, so one of the inspirations uh, for creating the dormers on the front facade in this fashion, uh, one, to create more of a sense of uh, balance with the roof. Um, so I, get, I think strengthening the, uh, the center line of this roof, and then also with the rear facade. Uh, again, breaking up that large mass of shingle above and then on the rear facade as well um, trying to create more interest and detail up on the uh, upper stories of the building and just to contrast it with where we were before uh, you can see how uh, kind of massive and, and looming this uh, roof structure is without any kind of um, <coughs> dormer to break it up uh, and then as well the um, the decision to go with casement windows rather than double hung really came as a result of the fact that uh, these two facades are so horizontal in nature. Um, really this house is very low slung and uh, creates no strong connection uh, vertically so we're trying to replace these strong horizontal lines um, on these facades uh, with something a little bit more elegant. Uh, creating more vertical proportions on the facade rather than a continuation of these really strong horizontal, horizontal lines. Um, there was a, a comment from um, uh, the letter that was sent out about the decision to go with, uh, to stay with double hungs on the north facade. Um, this was really a request by the homeowner for ease of use. 
Uh, these windows are in the master bedroom. Um, so are going to be used quite frequently for cross ventilation. And because this is mainly hidden from the uh, front facade, um, we thought that making an exception to doing continuous casements uh, would be acceptable. It's really a, a very secondary tertiary facade. Um, so really the two main facades, we are consistent in the use of casement windows throughout. So to open it up for questions or comments. All right, do we have a, thank you. Do we have a staff report for this? Thank you, Chairman Peretz. Um, this petition um, was labeled on your agenda as a revision, um, but it's really consideration of an expanded scope for the project. Uh, the rear addition that was approved last fall is currently under construction and consistent uh, with the approved plans um, that the, uh, certif according to the certificate of appropriateness. Um, the existing house is not a contributing structure to the district um, in the past that has um, allowed the commission to be a little more receptive to some change in the character of, of homes, um, especially when those uh, changes are consistent to each other and, and create a more cohesive whole. Um, the changes proposed don't, do not increase the bulk. Um, the commission did approve a building scale variance um, last fall for the project in the rear. Um, even though there was a reduction in the square footage for this house, um, the overall structure is still over bulk. Um, there was, um, as the petitioner mentioned, a, sm a small comment in the staff report regarding the um, consistent use of casement windows um, on all elevations. Um, at, as written in the staff report, it's not a recommended condition of approval. It was an identification of an issue for discussion by the commission. Um, so I welcome your comments, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, but we're um, recommending approval of the project. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments for the petitioner from the commission? I, I, I don't have a particular question. I do have a comment, though. It's, it's my sense, and maybe it's just me, it's my sense with the new roof form and the dormers and the siding of the chimneys and such, this, this feels like it's all out of balance to me, that, that, you know, that it's weighted heavily, you know, it, it's incongruous to me. So that's my comment on it. You know, I, I just, and I don't see, you know, a good solution to it, how you move it around. But you think the doors might help or hurt? Uh, or is it just the whole structure and how it's set up? Or is the additions? Well, it seemed to when it was lower and the dormers weren't there. It, it had a simpler, simpler feel. And so the balance wasn't, you know, it was, you know, didn't strike me the same. But that, that, that's my, my comment on it. I don't know if anybody else feels the same. And, uh, well, I have a, a couple questions just to clarify. Are, are you raising the height of the roof? No, the roof's staying exactly like, where okay. it is. Because it looks taller. Maybe it's just the flares on the outside. And um, I understand the vertical lines about the house because you can see it quite clearly on this front elevation. And if you look at all those windows, they're pretty much lined up very symmetrically. And when mm -hmm. you look at your dormers, you have the far left ones lined up, and then you have one that's off centered. And then the, the right one is lined up, you know, to was at the library or the dining room there. So maybe if you line up that middle dormer over the front door, you might have room for maybe another dormer in there. And then maybe you'd have a true vertical line that would make it look a little. Um, yeah, you know and we I mean? did we did look at that as well. The, the problem is. Um, this window is so close to the center line of the roof mm -hmm. that if you matched it over, those dormers would be very tight. And I think going with a very tight grouping of four dormers uh, might look more foreign to any of us than, than this arrangement of three. I just finished the renovation of a, a Frost and Granger house right off of uh, Triangle Park. And it has a very similar arrangement where the dormers are centered separately on the volume of the roof. And uh, down below, there's kind of another set of vertical axes. Um, I mean, with, 
with this uh, window and axial connection, we've tried to make a connection to the roof while still maintaining a nice space and balance up above. Mm -hmm. um, and I think really when you're down at the entry court and this becomes this small garden that you walk through to the front door, you'll be looking at more of the arrangement of these grouping of six windows and this window in relation to that. Um, so it doesn't have um, the pure symmetry of a, you know, of a house if we were starting from scratch, for instance. We're already dealing with a lot of asymmetrical elements that are kind of balancing and, and shifting. Um, same with this rear facade. Um, really to go through and start creating vertical connections with all these windows would have meant basically tearing the whole facade down. So we're, we're trying to make it better than it was, and I think we're making good steps in that direction, but you know, obviously this front facade I think is the most important facade for the community, and we've really tried to do something that's in keeping with some of the other historic buildings in the town. The rear facade, I mean, at the end of the day, um, there's gonna be a lot of landscaping introduced to help you know, mask some of these inconsistencies between the first and second, but you know, again, the creation of this bay and the doors above was a move to start creating some connection between the first and second floor. And then I think uh, this dormer uh, being centered on the uh, overall roof form is probably the most important gesture. Well, let me ask you about that rear dormer because I was trying to get a sense from the neighbor in the back about um, how intrusive that possibly could be on their privacy. Because once you have that dormer up there and lighted, at night, it's gonna be really bright. Now, I, I checked on the neighbor behind and they have some big evergreens, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's gonna be able to screen that. So, mm -hmm. is there a reason why you put a really big dormer as opposed to smaller ones? Because I think maybe the smaller ones would be less intrusive. Mm -hmm. maybe, two, the maybe two windows. Um, you know, we were actually, one of the precedents we were looking at, there's a great uh, Howard Van Doren Shaw house off Green Bay Road that has a long, um, kind of bank of dormers along the back. Obviously, uh, this is an elevation, so it's very diagrammatic, but uh, this sloped roof above here uh, is not a gable end. It's really a, uh, a roof that's set back. So this is intended to read uh, like a ribbon of windows. And again, I think because this facade has very little connection vertically from one floor to the next, we felt that three individual windows would make it even more chaotic and that really the dormer in a way helps to be one simple architectural move on an otherwise confused facade. So I guess from an architectural standpoint, a purely architectural standpoint, we felt like this was the mo most appropriate. Obviously from the homeowner's perspective, uh, this provides um, more space in an otherwise very linear space. Um, and, you know, from a zoning perspective, we're certainly not requesting to um, put a floor or ask for any kind of height increase. So in terms of, um, you know, from a zoning perspective, I, I think it's within their right to put windows up there. If it's really a question of whether this is gonna be uh, obnoxious for the adjacent uh, owner to have lights where there have never been lights before. Um, you know, maybe there is some type of landscape screening that could be put in with the intention that will grow to help shield um, that neighbor. But I do know that that neighbor to the, um, to the west uh, has an outbuilding that's pretty close to their property line as well. And because this house is set back so far in the yard, um, if you go back to the site plan, uh, the dormers are set here, um, really past the midpoint of the property. Um, I, I just don't see it being such a strong issue. Have you talked with the neighbor? Uh, no, we, we haven't been approached by them. Um, but uh, I know the neighbor to the north is here and he strongly supports the petition. Do you have a site elevation for this? Like say from the south, with the dormer. 
the saddle. Uh, this is the elevation of the south. <clears throat> so you can see the dormer here with that shed roof sliding back. And then again at the front facade. Trying to match the roof lines of the existing house. So right now is your sill pretty much right about where, the, where it intersects with the um, existing roof? Uh, the sill, the sill of the windows at that dormer. Yeah. Like on, the, on, the, on your, yeah, right there. That's intersecting the slope of the uh, yes. existing. That's you correct. You know, I, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. I, I agree maybe with, with Bill's uh, concerns a little bit first off is that maybe that, that, that bottom, actually the top one, I don't know, it kind of has an elegance to it. And, and it sort of kind of jumbles. It dominates the stuff below that isn't quite centered and maybe by sleight of hand and the fact that the dormers are on an angle up the roof, you only have to be in front of it to notice, so maybe you can get away with that one. Mm -hmm. But that rear one, I mean, I drove around on, I think it's uh, Church Street that goes behind, and you can really see this down that guy's driveway, and it's up there. It's going to be above a lot of landscaping that you're going to be able to try to put in. And it might be kind of nice to try to do something to make it look a little bit less subtle because it, it looks a little bit like you're backing up a bus out of that roof. And I'm wondering, you know, you said about Shaw and his dormers, he was really good at putting some things in, even ribbon-like. And I'm wondering if maybe if you could even recess and use a little bit of a flashed pan to get part of those windows and that sill back into the roof plane a little bit so that it's kind of like sleepy-eyed out a little bit. And you've mm -hmm. probably seen that in town, I bet. Yeah. And you know, and I'm, I don't really like your hipped roof because it starts going up and it's a different slope than the flanking ones. And I'm wondering if there's a way that you can somehow get a little bit more continuity. Uh, either, I mean, oh, you almost wonder if a shed dormer or a shed roof really flat might be better. But um, yeah, and I guess what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, that I, is that I'd like to see you be able to do this, but at the same time, <clears> I'd, I'd hate to regret it when we see it, as Susie said, maybe on at night. I thought for a minute earlier when I looked at this that maybe you could try to treat the outside flanking casement windows like your dormers are above and put the three windows set back just a tad. I think we saw Dave do that on a petition and then sort of by sleight of hand imply skinny little hip dormers and then have the middle roof maybe shed back and kind of, you know what I mean? Try to give it a little bit more um, uh, refinement maybe than just that hip thing because that looks a little contractor you know from from the subdivision and you're a skilled guy and I'm wondering if it's worth another pass or two um, anyway those are kind of my thoughts so as part of this thing the change out of double hung to casement then just to refresh my memory yes now. yes what do you guys think about the casements I don't think I have a problem with that too much. Well, well, I, I like we, them I think, I think they're, we approved I think they're nice. the casements Did the we? first time around and now they want to change the casements to double hung on the one facade, right? No, we want to change the uh, double hungs on the front facade to casements. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. So right now, if you look, that wasn't going to be part of the scope. Yeah. Um, and now we're requesting that yeah, to be part of the scope. That's good stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, the other thing that, and we've seen this before, it, we're trying to envision what this is going to look like in the th third dimension. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, if you look at just the photos that you've given us, I don't know if you've got those to show. Um, but look at, yeah, go to the front elevation. Um, let's see, uh, I think there's a shot. Well, yeah, that might, that one might not be bad. Well, let's see that this shot right here. Yeah, go on, go back to the last one, I guess. So the roof really looks different. Mm -hmm. from this angle you know, yeah that's what I was saying those elevations are really yeah, diagrammatic yeah, yeah it, it, it's not giving you the same feel from the photo that it does from the elevation and right. so I think that's one of the things that's a problem for us is, is that we're trying to impose our this we're trying to resolve this is what you see from the street right uh, with what is drawn in two dimensions and we face that problem all the time you know we're, mm -hmm. we're, and lots of times we've seen folks come back with a you know, a, a rendering of something that didn't look so good in, in two dimensions and in three dimensions, it kind of just went away. It didn't, and I'm, I think on the front, that might be what happens with these dormers because the scale is just, you know, they're so far up there and they're, you know. Mm -hmm. Now on the back, um, I, I see it the same way Guy does. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I look at it and I'm trying to, 
figure out what, what can you do to, to make that have a little less weight to it maybe. Uh, actually, I think the shed roof might work just mm -hmm. fine, and particularly if you back it up with a pan, that might work with just fine too. But it seems like the the what's proposed it will feel heavier on that. But that's just because mm -hmm. I've seen it in two dimensions. Yeah, I mean things become obviously much more horizontal in yeah. perspective than they do in elevation. The elevations are diagrammatic, so really, what might not appear like a ribbon of windows in elevation on the third floor of a building is really just going to look like a thin ribbon of win windows, you really won't perceive that roof at all. But like you said, from the neighbor's perspective, when you're very far away, uh, you will see the roof more. And I think um, that has been discussed with the owner before in terms of doing a raised seam metal yeah. shed roof. And I think if the commission is more comfortable with that roof um, on the rear of the building, um, I think we could accept that as a, as a condition. Well, I'm not sure I understand that, but let me, before I ask you more about that, um, you know, I'm, I kind of agree with Bill's original assessments. Like, you know, in the first proposal, the roof kind of goes away. It's just, you know, it's, there's not a lot of weight to it. There's not a lot of emphasis on it, and it kind of, the, the whole comp composition somehow seems easier on the eye without a lot of stuff going on up there. I don't think that it's mm -hmm. necessarily you know, so the question is, is, is it hurting it or is it helping it? I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm thinking that it's actually simpler without it. Yeah. Um, so it's an uphill battle. <laughs> but I mean, I'm like, guy, you know, I'm like, I'm, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. There's a lot mm -hmm. of space up there. It'd be nice to be able to figure out how to use it. Well, uh, I agree. I, you have to be careful with photos too, though, because like the two dimension is, is, is tricky. So are these photographs. I, I went by there earlier today with a, with a mind to so, see how that would affect. That happens to be rather your best photo, that backed up one. The three quarter view. This one? No, no, the three quarter. It's, it, keep going. No, that one. It's actually rather nice. You get a feeling like you're in France for a minute there. Um, I mean, it's a pretty steep roof. And uh, I think it holds up on the front anyway. I think three dormers actually could work to maybe help the overall view of it because they are thin. I was going to ask you about your corner boards for your dormers too. Um, because the street right there, you got the winter club on one side, that's a pretty big operation over there. And I think the building directly across the street set way back and it's a substantial masonry building if it looks like of some historic note. Uh, so I was thinking from a streetscape perspective, and there's a curving of the street too, so no one looks straight at this. I, I think the dormers kind of fit, and I, like, I think they could work. Um, now as far as the, how elegant they look, your, your elevations are small at this point, and they look rather thin and attenuated, which I think is a good idea. And of course, what, one of the traps that a lot of modern builders fall into is they try to thicken those walls up and make them two by six and jam all the insulation in the world in there to where mm -hmm. it's more than the roof was in the first place. Right. And they end up with these corner boards that are just massive, and then they put an even thicker two by 12 on top, and they got, so it's a disaster. I mean, the yeah. our code actually allows you a certain percentage for these types of, so I, I think it might be worthwhile to, you're gonna look at that, of course, with that in mind and make sure you have a nice, elegant, <laughs> Um, solution to that, right? Yeah, and that's uh, that's exactly what we're proposing for all these dormers. We use really thin sidewalls. We use foam insulation because I, I agree. You know what makes a uh, dormer beautiful is when the you know the full frame from the outside of the window to the corner board is maximum maybe five inches, and uh, if you you know it starts to create a much more kind of a bulky and more modern look when those when those edges become more like eight ten inches so I mean we would we would craft these uh, to make them look historic they'd certainly have more profile to them uh, actually five Yeah, I mean, that one shows the garage yeah, roof so having can, a, 
Uh, I mean, now you can start to see a little bit more of the detail and scale on the full-size drawings, but we're trying to make this house more delicate. And I think from a perspective, when you pull up to the house, uh, these dormers are going to look um, uh, very crafted. Correct. They're look like Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. elements on yeah. there. And right now, you've got the overhang on the garage. It's got a, an actual horizontal soffit. Yes, that, that's something else that we're introducing here as well. Right now, the, uh, the eaves, um, they're all vented. Mm -hmm. And it's a very kind of 70s detail. It's just a plywood soffit uh, with no real details. So we are uh, adding another uh, level of crown to that. We're putting new copper gutters on the house that's going to further kind of extend those, those roof eaves. Um, and on your dormers, then, I don't, I don't know that you want to actually have a horizontal soffit, though you might be better off with just a close cornice by the right. time you get to your shingles. Right. By the time the shingles are put on, it's going to add a little bit more of a, a delicate edge. I wonder, roof. yeah, that's true. I wonder how you might roof that if shingles would maybe bulk up and you might want to go with a roof, a metal roof on top. <coughs> anyway, so that's all I think for me. Do you want So I have a comment. Sure. Um, I think maybe we've been adjourned for a while. But I kind of feel like we're micromanaging this one. Well, it and is dormer night, though. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I think you caught us. <laughs> it is. I think you caught us. I think you caught us two months. You know, it's been two months since we've gotten together. We so I think everybody's kind of attacking this, and I've seen more discussion. <laughs> I mean, I've seen less discussion on teardown. I mean, I I think the front facade is fine and I think the back depending on the neighbor you know, could be an issue but the city approves it and he's a good architect and it is going to add functional light and usage to the top I, I don't see an egregious errors here and I could chalk it up to some taste and some other things so I'm in support of it well why don't we see if there's any public testimony mm -hmm. and then we can go into deliberations do we have any public testimony come on up and introduce yourself let us uh know who you are and thank you hi I'm Rich Brandell I, I'm at uh, 1020 North Sheridan the uh, property immediately to the north I commend uh, the Mastersons for uh, the renovation they're taking on and we're very proud that another house on our streets gonna look a lot better than it did before I think focusing on the improvement of the before after uh, this house did look a little funny, a little maybe contractor, as you've said. And um, I really think that the, the third story dormer in that, I just think is very classy. Um, we, we support it fully. Thank you. Any other public testimony? All right, I see none. So now is the time for deliberations, if we have any more. And uh, Jimmy, you're probably right. We probably <laughs> have been a little, probably a little rusty from uh, <laughs> I love the windows. I love what you've done with the windows. Yeah. Big improvement. Austin, you started to tell us about something about the roof. Did you want to talk more about that? Was that did I miss something on that? Or um, no, I mean it's a really it's a small detail, but I think it just goes to show how far the Mastersons. I mean, obviously they're investing a lot in the infrastructure of the house, and I think it's going to last again and serve the community for another good 40, 50 years um, before it might need more updating. But really. Everything that they're doing, they're really, uh, I think, doing the right way, in my view. I mean, we're going to all copper gutters and flashings, which right now are painted aluminum. Um, all the windows are going to be wood. Uh, they're going to be painted a soft gray color. Um, so, you know, even in the face of more maintenance, they've decided to uh, stay away from the aluminum clad. Um, you know, all the trim is uh, is really done in a way where, again, it looks crafted rather than mass-produced. So uh, I know the elevations can be jarring, and there's a big difference between the uh, perspective and elevation, but um, you know, I, we have uh, taken efforts to, to go around town and, and really you know, look at other historic buildings um, that weren't necessarily conceived at one time, that, but, it didn't, but it had been renovated over time. And, we feel that these architectural elements are consistent with some of the more historic details that you'll find throughout town. Thanks. 
Any other deliberations, Fred? What do you think? You got any comments for us? Uh, well, yes. I uh, initially uh, was uncomfortable, and I still tend to be with the uh, windows at the second floor not aligning with the uh, dormers, as was expressed early on by Commissioner Swenson. I, I share that discomfort. But then I since have been trying to become comfortable uh, with it and saying, well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not symmetrical. They're not aligning. On the other hand, um, Lots of nice things are going on with the detailing and uh, the trim that you've talked about uh, at the edge of the uh, roofs and uh, the soffits, et cetera, uh, which leads me to believe that uh, the end result will be good. So I'm in support of it. All right. Any other deliberations? Well, I can give my comments. I think I already did. But I think you really should relook at that alignment just to see if maybe you can make it. There is a. I know what you're talking about, the house you're talking about, and, but I've also seen that where it's jarring, you know, when they're not lined up because you have such a symmetrical pattern going on. Um, I understand trying to fit it in there, and then your floor plan's kind of affected too, so, but it's such a visible point, you know, on that front, and you've worked so hard to get the vertical lines, so if you can work on that, and maybe recessing the dormals will make them less obvious too. And the back, you know, I really, you know, consider screening or talking to the neighbor. Um, I think it's going to be kind of shocking to them to see that huge dormer lit up at night because I'm sure they're going to be using it a lot. That's great space. And the shed dormer, I think, is a great solution to that to make it look a little less, you know, uh, intrusive. Um, in terms of the windows, I, I really encourage you to, to pick a style and stick to it on all elevations. Um, and it depends what your your priority is. I mean, you've got the vertical lines going with the casement, but yet you get better ventilation with the double hungs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's more important to you? Is it the vertical lines or the double hungs? And then pick a style and stay with it. Um, and plus, those windows on the north side are going to get old quickly. You're going to probably have to replace them anyway soon, right, if they're from the 70s. Um, and then, what else do I want to say? So that's about it. So I, I think, you know, with a few tweaks here and there, I think you could have something that you know, is definitely an improvement. And I understand where you're going and the detailing is going to be nice. So, um, yeah, just consider some of the improvements we were talking about. To me, in the, on the front um, elevation, I don't mind the three dormers. They're lined up perfectly on the roof. And that's more important to me than lining them up with the windows. You know, I, I would need that sort of order on the roof more than the vertical. Um, on the rear elevation, I would prefer two dormers to one, but I see how the interior use really would love to have that, that the little alcove area. Um, so the recessed would be fine with me. I think it's a great, I, I, I like the whole thing. Well, I appreciate everybody's comments, you know, about seeing the elevation in two dimensions and how it might look different in the three dimensions and of course uh, you know the sighting of the, the the house itself on Sheridan Road and, uh, and such um, there, there still is something not agreeing with me about this you know I, I, I thought uh, Commissioner Athens comments were you know were along the line of my thinking um, and I appreciate what Commissioner Preslack says that we don't want to micromanage each project and I certainly am not capable of doing that even if I wanted to so um, but the, the project and I, I appreciate what you're trying to do using the attic space um, but the project to me isn't I'm not comfortable approving it at, at, at this this point, especially with the different uh, comments that have been made. And, and um, Bill, how would you feel about uh, this whole presentation if you we were to impose a shed roof on that rear and a, a recess? Um, actually, there's kind of two things I'm thinking about on the back, and you might have an idea for us too, Austin. Uh, one thing you could do is you could just make those windows a shade smaller by moving them up the dormer as opposed to, you know, having the pan recess that Guy proposed. Mm -hmm. that, would, that would give the visual effect of lightening up that horizontal band. Mm -hmm. um, I think recessing them might also do that because <laughs> they're mm -hmm. so far up, you know. Yeah. Um, 
what, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think that, because I, I'm kind of coming around to the point where I kind of feel like with some guidance from us on the back, maybe we can, you know, get on with this and, uh, and, and trust that the architect and staff will work out the, the, the details. Like, that's kind of how I'm feeling about it because I'm not so sure that I'm too caught up with what the back of that dormer looks like. On the other hand, I'm, you know, I'd like it to be as good as it can be. So, um, you know, I'm thinking that that, you know, should, you know, I had an idea on the shed roof. I don't know if that was your last word on that or if you have other ideas, but, um, you know, my thinking on it is, is if we could find a way to make that rear dormer a little, a little less in your face. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the two comments that were made, obviously the uh, going to a, a shed roof, raised seam metal roof, I think would be consistent with a lot of the details you find in the historic district. It would certainly create more of a horizontality to that, to that dormer. Um, you know, unfortunately, this really looks like a hat in elevation, which I don't think it would read like this in uh, perspective being low, but you know, looking at this uh, dormer addition from much farther back, I think that's a great solution to maintain that kind of ribbon quality to the windows. Um, I do think it's important to note, too, when you're looking at this rear elevation, I mean, there is some connection to another grouping of windows on this rear facade, so I, f I feel like it does have a little bit of glue beyond just being kind of uh, ax you know, uh, symmetrical on that, on that roof plane. Um, in terms of recessing uh, the dormer back, um, I agree it would diminish the scale of this dormer, uh, both from the north and from the south. You wouldn't get that full uh, triangular view here. And I think if uh, the commission recommended that we recess that dormer into the plane of the roof, that we could certainly work with those two things, uh, creating the shed dormer here and then recessing this dormer maybe up to 12 inches, um, you know, adding those two details on it, I think would be uh, an enhancement. Yeah, I think you can probably take our input, maybe, I don't know if we want to make it something where you converse with staff. I don't really think I want to see them come back with it. I don't know at that point. But I do think it's important for us to spend time on anything that implies the third story, though. And, it, it, you know, and we all bother to come here anyhow and spend the hour or two or three, so make an extra five or ten minutes, <clears throat> lest everybody come in and want a third story set of dormers all over town. So I think it's a good idea <clears throat> that these things do have a refinement to them, and I think you're capable of pulling that off. So those are my thoughts. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm deciding whether I want to ask you one more question. <laughs> On the, in the uh, floor plan of the, I believe it's the third floor here, it shows, um, is that an attic space that's accessed off of the? Yes, this is uh, a mechanical space. So right now we're up feeding the first floor and down feeding the second floor from this mechanical room uh, in the attic. So that's just inside the, the roof itself? That's correct. Yeah. It's completely uh, uh, interior. And uh, I just, I guess, go back to the elevation once then. And I'm, uh, I was looking at the dormer and trying to decide if it wants to be exactly in the middle of that roof, on the back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, only because you have this completely asymmetrical kind of elevation everywhere else. And I see what it, on the front of the building, the three dormers being kind of regularly spaced is very comforting to me. It seems to be bringing order to something that where there's not, you know, some order already maybe. And it just looks, it just looks, okay, it looks good, you know. On the back, I don't know, am I off the track on that? I mean, it almost looks to me like it wants to slide to one direction or the other, probably the other to the right. but. It'd be almost something you could look at and say, hmm, maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but maybe it's just me. I, I know. I mean, I've, I've been troubled by uh, it's the like original a arrangement spot in the middle of the as roof. well, <laughs> but I, I, do, I do feel like, you know, once this uh, reads more like a, lung, a yeah. low slung element uh, in this roof. I can see why I almost did ask the question. <laughs> that it will, I, I think this will settle back into the roof, especially with the suggestions of sliding this in. Um, 
you know, obviously the, the waterproofing details become much more critical at that point. Yeah. But, um, but I, I think we can still achieve that very successfully. And then again, uh, the, the low slung shed dormer on top will really, um, I, think this, I think this triangular top um, really reads um, strangely in elevation where it's not going to be yeah. so prominent. In the also, it's really hard to see this from, from this view on the site, you know, to stand mm -hmm. specifically in the middle of the house and look back at it. But I won't, I would tell you that it probably wouldn't offend me to see that dormers pushed over to the right. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Uh, does anybody care to make a motion on this one? I think that what, what I'm hearing is, is that we're generally okay with this. We'd like to see the, the roof uh, be a shed roof and we'd like to see the dormer on the rear of the house be uh, recessed around 12 inches. Um, I think we can add that as a condition for the staff to work out with you the, the exact specifics of. Um, do I have anybody that's ready to make a motion on that? Or need any more dialogue on it? I'll go ahead and make a motion for it. You want to make a motion? I sure. I'll, I'll read what the staff has because basically they're saying um, grant a certificate of appropriateness for the new domers on the front and rear elevation. Um, and I would add a condition with that based on our feedback to um, include a shed dormer on the rear and met modifications to the front as, as suggested by the commission. Does that cover everything? Yeah, I think so. So the motion has been made. Well, that's not it. Oh, because then this is modification to the roof form and replacement of all double hung windows with casement. Okay. So that says on all ele elevations, they should be all casement windows. All right, so I think we need to discuss that one more time because there seems to be a difference between what we see in the recommendation and... Well, that's part of the staff approval, a recommendation. I understand, I but I didn't quite catch that, I think. So no. can I just ask a little more about that? Did you specifically change what they were requesting? Um, in my comments, I just clarified that as we are recommending this project, it is as presented, but identified the issue that some of the windows are inconsistent for the commission to discuss. So it would be appropriate for you to I craft see. your motion accordingly. So the nuance is, is that the petition's requesting replacement of only certain windows, mm -hmm. and they would replace those to casement windows. So right. oh, double hung to casement. Right. right, but there would be some existing windows that would remain double hung. I don't think so, not according to your recommendation. As proposed, there are some windows on the north elevation that will remain as double hung. The recommendation. It says replacement of all double hung windows with casement windows. I believe she's referring to all of the ones that are pro being proposed to be replaced. That's the staff recommendation. The commission can certainly discuss that matter and make uh, craft the motion according to the, your discussion. But just to be clear, your recommendation isn't to expand the scope of the project to include all of the windows. That's correct. I, it was simply an identification of an issue um, with respect to the windows, something to consider. Okay, that's the way I understood it, but I'm not sure it's the way you understood it. No, because I'm reading the staff recommendation. It says all double hung windows with casements. So I'm assuming all is. Well, our, the motion we windows. make is it doesn't have to follow what right. the staff so, says. Okay. We're well, just, you, you know. That's what I'm supporting. So, right. so, so there seems to be need, need to be yeah. some discussion on whether. Yeah, there's going to be a requirement to make some of these double, double on all the double on windows, casement windows. And again, you know, I appreciated your comments that it should be one or the other. You know, and again, we get into this kind of hodgepodge of, you know. So there's windows. Four windows, Austin, or is there more than that that we're talking about? That uh, we're talking about, uh, sorry, these six windows in this facade. Okay, so and all of the other windows in the house are scheduled for replacement and would be casement except for these six in your presentation. Yes, that's, that's correct. Okay. And, uh, you know, again, this is probably the most sheltered uh, view of the house and the owners uh, really making, we, we deliberated over this for a while and really from a functional perspective, um, this is something that the owner really wanted and, and going back again to that Frost and Granger house that was built in 1906, um, you know, some of these houses that aren't perfectly ordered and pure, like some of the Adlers around town, uh, there is a little bit of, uh, of give and take on the windows. I mean, if, again, if we were designing this from scratch, we would probably do a lot of other things uh, differently than what we've done, but, you know, we felt like um, 
these dormers, they'll be painted, or sorry, these uh, double hungs, they'll be painted the exact same color. They'll have the same mullion profile. Uh, they'll look, you know, of the same period, um, but it's really just from an operational perspective, functional perspective from the owner there requesting to have those be uh, double hungs. But I feel yeah. like there are other But, but you are replacing them. them. They're, they're new windows. They'd be new windows. Okay. They would be new windows. That's correct. I mean, there's nothing to stop a, a subsequent owner from checking those out and putting casements in yeah. and making it all the same someday. So, you know, from a standpoint of property owner rights, it's not like he's mixing them in on one of the other facades. You know, I, I, it, it doesn't, doesn't really bother it, me. I'm ambivalent about yeah. that. I mean, they've, they've done a lot to make this house better than it was, and if this is something that they want to live with the way it is for yeah. whatever reason, I, I'm not going to mandate any, or not be in favor of having to mandate that. So just keep the motion. As, as is as intended yeah. so uh, no I'm, I'm sorry i think that uh i i think i misunderstood your motion because i thought that these windows were existing to remain that was my understanding of, of the project as well right. um but it as so, clarified so the by motion the petitioner yeah. needs to be amended to or, or the staff if we were approving what was being requested mm -hmm. then we would need to amend that staff uh, recommendation or we would need to amend our motion to be approve what they've asked for instead of what the staff recommended on the windows. Okay. Are you comfortable with that? I'm, I'm actually fine. How about you folks? Does anybody feel that, I mean, again, I do have a, uh, 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 you know, I'm, I'm really enthused that folks come to these meetings with these kinds of scope. This is a great project. You guys are doing a lot of work here. I mean, this, this kind of window thing is the kind of thing that would drive me crazy if I was on the <laughs> other side of the deal. So, I mean, I'm okay with it. I, I mean, whether these are casements or double hung, you. I think the casual observer would have a really hard time figuring that out because of the way that they're placed on the site. So I'm okay with it myself. But That's I would fine. like to approve the. So uh, so amend the motion to yep. include windows as proposed. That's what I would say. Yeah. How's that? Okay. okay. So do you think we got that? A uh, motion <laughs> has been made, such as it is, by. Uh, oh, go ahead, Fred. Nope. Sure. We'll go second. Oh, well, there got a motion has <laughs> been made. And it's been seconded before it was made. It's made by Commissioner Athens and seconded by Commissioner Moyer. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right, there we go. You've managed to go, go through dormer night first one. Oh my gosh. Uh, thank you <laughs> thank very you much, very for, much for all your time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good luck with that. It's a great project. <clears throat> all right. We're making record time here. Uh, thanks, folks. Our next uh, agenda item is a request for a certificate of appropriateness for revision to an approved plan as it relates to the garage expansion at 950 North Maplewood uh, Road. This is also a petition that's been before us before. Uh, I'm going to ask if there's any ex parte conflicts. I don't think that anyone here had any before, so we're good. We have a model, so we can pass that around and uh, just dive in whenever you're ready. Thanks. <laughs> Steve Rigo. Um, we're here representing the petitioner. And this is maybe the reverse of the previous one where it's actually a reduction in scope. And what we're really looking at uh, in comparison is to leave the existing dormers where they are and actually remove most of the four foot addition on, or remove the four foot addition on the front and just shift the doors so the garage can actually function and it does create a more asymmetrical condition that was already there which was already there because the dormers are not aligned directly over the doors um, with one one addition which is to move the face where the garage doors are out about 10 inches to lower the eave line so it doesn't become just a big one pure mass which is what we've worked through with uh, staff we looked at a lot of different things, raising them, lowering them, sh pushing the door out, and all of that. Probably the one change in addition over the current viewpoint as you're looking at it in, D in 3D is that the doors will then be more recessed, the garage doors, so they'll have a little bit more weight to them and actually give it a little more detail than the way they might appear 
in say, the picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably, uh, there really is an attempt to change anything else. It's really kind of leaving more the way it already was as opposed to what had been proposed earlier. I'm trying to keep that succinct and small. Can, can you just walk us through what's going on uh, over the entry door there, the side entry door next to the garage? I think um, the roof. Actually, oh. nothing. Okay, so before the roof was being extended, it was coming forward, and there was a there was actually that became a covered porch. There was the whole wall was coming forward four feet, and so that's all moved back. And the, the notion was to bring where the garage doors are forward a little bit more. In other words, the thickness of a brick to bring the eave line down so it wouldn't be a little less massive, just a fairly subtle detail. All right, well, uh, unless there's anything else, let's just hear what staff's got to say and we'll come back with questions. Thanks. Thank you, Chairman Peretz. Uh, the massing and detailing of this garage wing has um, really been challenging since the start of this project. The commission spent um, a few meetings discussing it, uh, figuring out the correct um, portions, roof forms, uh, covering for the, the man door adjacent to the garage. Um, and what's, what's being proposed now is, is a reduction in the scope of the project um, with some slight detailing to um, make matching the brick a little uh, easier um, with a slight recess, um, or I'm sorry, a slight bump out of the brick wall uh, with the garage doors. Um, similar to the previously proposed project, the, the doors will remain um, the same doors. They're reusing those detailing, matching some of the detailing of the arch. Um, since there was a lot of discussion over this piece at the previous discussions, we felt it was important to bring this before you. Um, the, uh, there is still an expansion to the side, um, which elongates that garage piece. Um, and in the end, I think the, this was a good compromise that the petitioner um, put together after some lengthy study of the garage massing. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, but we are recommending approval of this uh, at this time. Um, and I, I'll add one more thing. Consistent with the previous approval, the addition um, to the rear is under construction and uh, consistent to the approved plans. Sure. Um, one question for either, either. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who could answer this question. Um, what did we approve on the uh, side? We there, there was something different on the side of this as well. The, when I say the side, the uh, east side, right? Um, I see the the, the new proposed uh, elevation for the east side. Is that exactly what was before, just in a slightly different location, or is that was that? If there was four feet coming out in the front before, that roof came down a little lower and the siding would have come around and we've adjusted it so we get a continuous line from the new height. And in doing so, there's a little more, there's a little more brick on the, find that, on the east side. So in, within that blank wall, we put two, we just recessed some of the brick detailing in that like there were windows there, perhaps, that had been filled in. Was there like a, a, a little hip roof there or something? Oh, no, that was on the first one. We took that out on the approval. I see. Yeah. You do remember that correctly. Yeah. <laughs> the hip roof went away. I got it. That was, the, that was when it had a flare more as a simple, almost more as a porch addition over the top of a garage and around, wrapping the corner. So it's really kind of a secondary kind of concern at the moment, but right, right now what happens is, is that the large gables of both of the largest structure of the house, if you will, is brick. That's brick on those mm -hmm. gable walls, right? And then as you turn the corner on the far west elevation, that's brick as well. But all of them on the north elevation. But when you come, now if you turn around on the north elevation, what abuts this siding on the second floor is then brick again, right? So if you look at the south elevation once, it's brick. As it turns the corner. Uh, you have the south elevation. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that brick to the? There's uh, there's one portion where it's a uh, slate tile, which is matching the original rear dormer in that recessed area. Oh, I see. So, so. Hmm. Okay, so it does turn the corner as yes. again. Yes, okay. and then the second 
second uh, wing down further to the right is siding as well, it, uh, also existing. I thought I read that as brick on one of the other elevations. But, uh, let me just make sure. I guess we don't have that south elevation. That's why I didn't do Okay, <clears throat> I'm good. Um, any questions or for oh, staff for the I'm presentation? Sure. What, what, now, what happens when you try to center the dormers over the doors? I mean, well, we're leaving the existing ones in the existing location. Okay. It's probably a factor of uh, a significant sum, well into five figures. So you don't want to move them because they're going to yeah. cost too much. Yeah, at the request of the okay. owner. I just thought maybe you drew it up and there was something about it that didn't look. Well, good. we we also it was also we had lots of discussions about the fact that we all began to feel it was less massive yeah. as it be, as it extended at yeah, different no, I levels that. than lining everything yeah. up where it becomes kind of very. It definitely was drawn. I think we've seen that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I wanted to hear him say that because yeah. I mean oh. someone's going to be watching this and wonder what's the matter with this. <laughs> what's the what's the plus side to not changing? Is, is it, it does it, and if you if, go back to the photograph, Brian, there are two really large, there's a whole row of large fir trees, you know, very mature, 80 feet tall, mm -hmm. 60 feet tall, they're huge. They really cover almost all of that addition from the street. And there's just enough room that we've worked with forest dirt, like the entire foundation on that side is really just on pilings. There's not even a continuous foundation mm -hmm. where you're not interrupting too many tree roots, that sort of thing. So, you really, in 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 reality, you don't you actually don't see much of it. We're hardly going to notice much of that roof. Not any one of the twelve months. Any other? I just have a quick question about why we're seeing this petition again. So just so I understand, mm -hmm. uh, the, the staff made a site visit and the construction was proceeding not according to what we approved. Is that right? Um, this was a project that the, the commission actually directed staff to, to make periodic site visits um, as to watch the progress of um, the project. Um, there was a time when they were pouring the foundation um, where they, they only approved a portion of what was approved. So we did question at that time um, what their intention was um, and was able to um, bring something for you before you, you know, before construction occurred. So it was to resubmit that there was full intention and it was all discussed with both. It wasn't even permitted, the garage portion. The, re, the interior remodeling was all permitted. And there was no intention of starting this portion until it came back on a reduced sco scope. Oh, so you were going to come back anyways? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Was, okay. Yeah, it was. Oh, okay. We've been talking about this for a couple months. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted yeah. to make clear. I thought maybe no, it wasn't, we caught them at something. No. <laughs> okay. There was not a big orange tag, if you're asking <laughs> that question. No. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, my question is, why is, uh, on the east elevation, why is there brick detailing in the shape of windows rather than windows in there? Because that's the extent of the storage wall in the garage. Okay. And there's a, a, and also a very, uh, there's a 10 foot, eight, eight, how big is the fence? Eight, six, eight feet you know, on the property line. There's, there's a revert, and those big fir trees, there's no light to speak of on that side. Certainly isn't going to be with bricks there. <laughs> no, I don't know that you'd get much even with wind. Yeah, it's pretty dark, <laughs> and and that's likely to be the location. That that'll be all the refuse and recycling and all of those sorts of things will be most likely if when it's not in the garage, any wood piles and those kind of things. I, I appreciate the screening, so it's yeah. not a, offensive to the neighbors. But yeah. I would I would think that you know putting in some windows there would probably be preferable to having that brick. Yeah. But but uh, you know. Uh, overall, I, I, liked, I like the project. It seems to me that when I was here, you know, our concern was the, where the bump outs and the, the low eave lines mm -hmm. and the, the covered porch and stuff. I'm saying those are eliminated. Yeah. I, I think is more in line with, with what we were kind of hoping for before. But, mm -hmm. You know, so. Okay. 
Um, all right, let's ask if there's any public comment, and then we can deliberate. Any public comment? Thanks, I see none, so we will deliberate. And we've probably started already, so we can keep going. Um, you know, this is something, this came to, uh, uh, I got a phone call on this from uh, uh, Megan, I guess, probably in early December, <laughs> maybe even, even earlier than that. And it, and it was uh, a conversation that, you know, they were considering some changes to this and how much latitude did the staff have. Um, we granted very little latitude because this was kind of a con con controversial, maybe, I don't know. I think, I think what we did, were doing was we were struggling with the, uh, the proportions. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see anything when Megan and I talked about it that led us to believe that it was like, a, oh, this is a profound improvement. It was just a kind of a, a, a new struggle. It was just slightly shifting some things around. And I, you know, I think we're exactly where we started. Uh, when we last approved it, which is it's it's okay. It's not there's something about it That's for just you know, there's probably a, a, Something unsettling about the placement of the dormers I think a lot of this addition gets lost in the landscaping from the way that the house is viewed and I think we were always concerned about um, this portion of the house taking over the You know the your perception of how the house is read when you go down the street from that point of view, I'm not sure it's really changed very much from what we approved, so I'm okay with it. I think it's, uh, um, you know, I don't know that it's any, any, any better or any worse than what we approved last time. I think it's one of those resolutions that it's, you know, it's a positive uh, change for the house in terms of the way it's used, and um, it's a difficult composition to uh, perfectly uh, uh, resolve, but, you know, this is probably as good as it's, you know, I don't, I don't, nothing like jumps out at me and says, oh, if we did that, it would be much better. To my eye, moving the dormers around uh, changes the character of the one element of the house that probably wants to be preserved. So I would probably leave those alone. Uh, and so I, you know, I'm okay with it myself. I don't have any real issues. Anybody else? Well, I'm in agreement with your, your comments. Okay. I'm in agreement. All right, well, if there's no other uh, second guessing of the chairman, I, I'll ask for a motion. <laughs> I'd move to uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness for the revised drive as submitted. All right, the motion's been made by Commissioner Ransom. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Athenson. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I hear none, so that one passes. Good luck. And thank you. All right, we'll move on. Do you want your model? Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Um, all right, we have a request for a certificate of appropriateness for revision to an approved plan as it relates to garage dormers, dormer night, at 142 South. South Stonegate Road. Uh, and I think we have a model here that we're going to take a minute to go up and take a look at. So if everybody wants to do that real quick, we'll uh, peruse your model and then we'll come back and let you okay. dig in. All right, thanks, please. Thank you. <laughs> 
I know. All right, good evening. As you <laughs> may recall, this uh, petition was put forward uh, in, the, in the November uh, HPC meeting. We were approved to have both additions at the garage and the uh, master bedroom um, were both approved. Um, since that time, we went ahead and, and produced the model, sat down with staff, and looked at some of the suggestions uh, from the board. In doing so, we started considering um, perhaps the business as you approach the house and, and, and the different dormer styles that we were uh, seeing, and how we wanted to try and maybe uniform, uh, give some, I'm sorry, give some uniformity to the dormers as you approach the residence. So that's really where this petition um, is coming from. So the revisions to what was approved are um, a change to the east-facing dormer on the existing garage. So that currently had an arch-top dormer to it. We'd like to propose to make that a gable dormer similar to the dormers flanking the turret. Um, we're also proposing revising the new additions north-facing dormer to the same uh, sort of relationship with gable dormer, again, to, uh, to echo what's going on on either side of the turret. Um, along those lines, we've also raised the eave line of the garage addition to be in line with the existing garage. Um, in doing so, this creates a more uh, appropriate relationship between the pop-through dormer um, and the eave line, similar to, again, what's at the main house, and it also provides some additional um, headroom on the second floor. As far as details and masking go, proposed do uh, gable dormers again are going to be matching the details of the existing dormers flanking the turret. We'll have the same Juliet uh, railing detail, same masonry and roof details. Um, this uh, presents a unified aesthetic upon approaching the residence. So as you come down the main drive and you're in that formal auto port, the residence has a more unified look as you walk around there. Just, uh, um, and the dormer fenestration that you can see in the north end of the garage is echoed across the residence in many areas. You see this singular pop from the dormer with a window uh, down below. So the area of the work that we're proposing at this point is right here at the garage. And you can see, uh, we're missing some of the driveway around this topo here, but as you came through the, the formal driveway approach the residence, this is the formal water port I'm referring to. As you circle around this uh, the fountain in the middle here, you see all the same dormer lines going all the way around this, this section. And that was the reason for um, changing the dormer shape. Uh, just some floor plans for reference. Uh, what we changed here is the penetration of the north end there. Uh, on the second floor, this was an existing dormer, it's just been revised to a gable form. And then this dormer, you know, was originally proposed, is now identified as a gable dormer. So, looking at the elevations, the east elevation of the garage, again, there was a dormer in this location previously. It's now been pulled forward with the line plus the wall, similar to what's flanking the turret. And it gives you the same relationship of dormer on the floor below. And that's an existing door below. Uh, it was an overhead door, but it had been approved for five minutes. It's one door The north elevation of the garage addition, what we've done here is really just pick up on what's currently at the northeast elevation of the map measure. You can see the top of your dormer and the doors below. And these photographs here, it's exactly the same relationship that we're supposed to have in the north end of the garage. And then looking at the west elevation of the garage, uh, we've maintained what's existing in this, in this area here, and you can see the side of that, uh, the new proposed form. And it, the way I look at it, uh, this view is really the more pedestrian or more uh, private side. The pool is on this side. I can see how you know, the, the formality of the residence has definitely stepped down. There's really no reason to revise this form because they're appropriate for this elevation. And as I, as I see that the formal side of the garage could stand uh, some, you know, a little more formal development. questions. All right, thanks. Let's see if we have a staff report first. Thank you, Chairman Paris. One more time, thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, so the commission uh, did recently review and approve uh, or issue a certificate of appropriateness for this project. Um, shortly after uh, that approval was granted, the petitioner um, approached staff with some requested changes. Um, some of them appeared appropriate uh, with respect to the um, window con and door configurations on the wall face, um, but the changes to the dormers um, based on our initial review could really benefit from some input and direction from the commission um, given the limited, um, the limitations to exactly match details found on the existing house. Um, I think some modification to those dormers that were approved could certainly be appropriate. Um, I do welcome your comments and input on this as I'm sure the petitioner does as well. Um, but we are recommending that uh, the commission continue this item to allow for some uh, further discussion on the matter. All right, thank you. Um, well, let's dive into it. Uh, 
questions or comments for either the staff or the uh, presenter here. No, I have a quick question. Why did you decide to change the style of the donor as originally proposed? Because the original proposal was the rounded top donor. Right. It, it came from really looking at the model and understanding you know, what the views of approaching the residents would be. We saw the formality of the dormers that you saw as you approached the residents and felt that it was an even more unified um, aesthetic by changing the dormers to match what's already existing <coughs> flanking the table. So was, it wasn't a, um, a matter of functionality or a headroom in the living space? No, it was okay. purely an aesthetic and uh, trying to unify the look. Okay. So changing the dormers to what we originally proposed or keeping the dormers as we originally proposed wouldn't change the functionality at all of the space being used. That's correct. Okay. Well, thank you. I have a question for you. Uh, your, I guess your recommendation to continue on the discussion of the dormers, is that because they're not all the same in terms of the back to more casual or that they changed to begin with? Or just what is your key hang up with the proposed design? Uh, I think in looking at, at this proposal, um, like I said, some change might may be appropriate. Um, I think the important piece is that the, the details and the relationship of the roof to the dormer and the eave line to the, to the window really be consistent and um, it, just so that the whole uh, composition is viewed as a whole. You know, I, I don't know what staff's hang up to the dormers were, but just my initial hang up with them is that 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 whole wing seems to be subservient to that center turreted area with the higher roof line and such and we're having eaves that are I, I thought when they were smaller and rounded you know as you approached it you know your your eyes was were drawn to the to the main area now as you approach it it almost seems like that's that can be considered the main area of the house I liked it when it was subtler and smaller and, and, and such. So, you know, th th that's my hang up I, I, about it. I think you know. I think you you've uh, you're reading Megan's mind actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think she's got on the same track. I think she's trying to put it gently, but I'm quite sure she prefers the original approval, um, as I do too. Uh, I, I you know, my sense of it is is that, uh, exactly like you put it, Bill, is, is that um, we probably don't want to draw too much attention to the fact that we're adding more square footage or more wings onto this house. Um, and I think what you're doing with by changing these two dormers out, even though they match the ones that are on either side of the turn, I think they're just, they're really providing focal points in areas that you don't, aren't looking for focal points. They're not really, that's not really, and frankly, I don't even like the change of the two windows on the end, I don't know what end that is anymore, the north end of this addition. I, I, I prefer the original solution even for the windows below versus the one window in the middle of that, um, and that might be uh, more of a nuance, uh, but uh, it just is one of these things that makes the, it, I, I think the whole addition resolves itself a little, a little nice a little nicer in the original composition. So, um, I agree. It's kind of refreshing to hear the, you know, uh, you're not a lay person, but the but the sort of intuitional um, hang-up description of it, rather than make this a specific to an architect speak, because uh, you know, I, I know that I've worked thin on people at times, but I won't be here very much longer. Um, I was actually happy to see the model when you pulled it out, because I think I was actually advising you strongly that you might look at that as a tool to help you with further refinements, and I was a little apprehensive that actually pulling that garage out would start to create this sort of overly enclosed forecourt whereas now it's sort of a rangy angular thing now you're getting now you're creating a catcher's mat and I, I was worried about that I, I revisited that uh, in the plan and you're you're doubling one leg and thirding the other but uh, one thing what you about what you did before is that by having that eave lower you you kind of stepped up the thing and, and, and that created a hierarchy so I agree ex exactly with what's been mentioned uh, and there are other logistical things that impact this too, and one is I think that the garage ceiling might be higher than the ceiling in the house because you have to go up a couple stairs to get into this wing from the second floor, or do you go down? You do go, you do go up from the second floor into the garage. 
Yeah, so what happens is that when you line up your dormers, if you put your other elevation up, well, no, this is the one. You, as you see, by, by, by um, copying exactly the dormer's height, because it's kind of hard to modify it. And sometimes you're better off leaving something alone because they're very exquisite, the existing ones. But you end up actually at a higher level on your new dormer because of all that, you know, datum. So that the actual two new dormers here that are peaked are higher than the ones on the house. And then by foreshortening, your first views are gonna make them even bigger. So you're kind of really gonna get whacked. I went by the house at the end of the day just to make sure how much you're gonna see of even the back court. It's a lovely house. And I was a little worried that maybe seeing the, the smaller dormers and the bigger dormer on the end might cause a, an unpleasant effect. And so you, I, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that maybe these, these improvements or these, these modifications might be going in the wrong direction. And furthermore, too, when you raise up, and I'm saying this as much for the homeowners, too, it's trying to help with making sure you get all of our input, is that by raising that eave up, what, one thing that happens, and it's more apparent on this drawing than on the model, because the model is, your, is a really good attempt at, at the reality, but you see how that slim line is there on each side of the roof? That's going to be a shingle turning a corner, and it's going to start looking questionably narrow, and I think that might set the whole thing up to look a little trivial. I think that's maybe my, my concern, is that by overdoing the dormers, it might trivialize them by having everything be kind of the same instead of a hierarchy. Um, that's, that's one of the steps. Mm -hmm. There, I will throw one more fly in the ointment, or one more thing to think about anyway. Um, the one that on the north elevation is the one that's the most unsettling to me. The one on the back of the garage, um, although I agree with Guy, I think if you do it, you have to really copy, you have to find a way to execute it exactly the way that the other two are. I think it could work in that location, but it can't work over the top of a garage door. It has to be, you'd have to change the door underneath it to match. So you'd, you'd have to replicate exactly the, the, the construction on, that's on either side of the turn. And then as it turns the corner, I'm not sure that would be so, so bad if it could work that way, but it leads into a garage. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure that from a functional point of view, you got, you're going where you want to go with it. Yeah, I, but, but at least that is the formal kind of side of the house. And I think there's enough mass on that side of the house to carry it if it were resolved exactly like it is on either side of the dormer. But on the north end, I think it's forced, and I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's successful. But by the time you put it on the north end, then it's like, well, why not just continue it on the whole? Yeah, yeah I was actually thinking, right. Kurt, that maybe, maybe you forego the balcony railing over the garage door and, and, the, and the idea of a door, and you just drop the whole thing down and change the length of the window. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, but it's different. Yeah. And then maybe on the north end, that's when you actually make it shift to look more like the back of the garage court. Yeah. And, then, and also drop the eave again. Right. So to where they were before. Yeah, I think dropping the E as direction. It. I'm not telling you you have to do it that way, but yeah. if you say, okay, you guys don't like it, you've got hangups. What are we gonna do about it? That's maybe my yeah. suggestion. Don't yeah. don't have to do it. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I think there are some places where you could continue to refine it, and and you yeah. know maybe we'd like to, you know we'd see it again and consider it. But I mean, as presented, I I think you'd be better off with the, what was originally proposed, myself including the E height. Uh, as far as I see it. So we could continue it if you like. I think we're, I mean, we didn't ask for public comment, so maybe we should do that real quick. Um, is there any public comment from anyone? We've joint, jumped into our deliberation. Um, I, I guess we see none, so, uh, you know, unless there's any other words of wisdom for us. I mean, I kind of, I'm hearing from the commission that they like what was approved. They don't like this as much. We're happy to continue it if you like, if you want to think about it some more. Um, or, uh, you know, if you've heard us and you're done, then we can, we can do it. Uh, we can, we can ask for a vote. So, so Megan, if we continue this, it could be withdrawn by the petitioner, yeah. right? They don't right, well, let's bring it back. Go go back. Let's, uh, let's have yeah. a motion to do that then, and then they can decide uh, what they want to do. Uh, I, I'd move to continue the petition uh, as presented. All right. The motion has been made by Commissioner Ransom. Do I have a second? Second. And uh, seconded by Commissioner Moyer. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And uh, I hear no opposed. So uh, it will continue that and hopefully uh, we've given you some good input and uh, 
Good luck with that. It's a tricky little detail. Dormer night is tough. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, please. We're going to take a quick break, but if uh, we have a new petition that we can get set up for, um, and, and this is a new one. This is a, a request for certificate of appropriateness for landscape lighting on a property located at 900 North Green Bay Road. Uh, so give us a couple minutes to get organized, and then we'll jump right in. Um, Mr. Commissioner, I'd, I'd like to recuse myself from this petition because the architectural component was a project that I was involved with. So I All feel right. like it's probably appropriate. So I won't be coming back up if that's okay with that's our elementary procedure. Um, let me just ask if that's okay. Do we have anything on the uh, rest of the agenda that we need Mr. Berg for besides uh, after we after we re recruit? Um, yeah. So okay. Oh, I, I, I think I feel pretty comfortable with what I heard earlier. If that's all right, I have an early morning meeting. Okay. So we have a quorum on that. Okay. Thank you, guy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, in presenting the landscape lighting uh, as the designer and as the design intent here with both in keeping with the with the city um, and the ideas of, of really keeping the lighting uh, impact down and also in keeping with the clients desires to keep everything as subtle as possible um, we've really focused the majority of the lighting on specific key features uh, that way you know, we're not trying to illuminate everything. Um, and really, uh, I can start you from the front entrance. Uh, as you were to drive into the drive, 
we really wanted to highlight the trees to guide you through. Um, this is a new driveway. Uh, the drive got re, uh, reorientated. Um, this way, it, it'll guide you through to the new drive, uh, highlighting the evergreen trees, um, which will keep, obviously, keep uh, a dense cover year round. There shouldn't be any impact on the neighbors um, getting any glare uh, from those fixtures. Uh, knowing that the setback is here and also that there really there's a lot of large trees here uh, we really felt like this should be a dark area um, there was no need to light anything in particular uh, and then hoping to guide you more toward the entrance um, the, the landscape designer has incorporated some some key garden ornaments in the center turf area uh, we decided to light those, um, both for functionality as, uh, as the snow comes and as you're driving around at night. Obviously, there's no definition of, the, of a curb for the drive. Um, in lighting those softly, we, we hope to define that edge uh, and give a little bit of, of play there as they'd be decorative ornaments as well. Um, one of the, the greatest focuses here is, is washing the front facade. Um, I brought an image of the house as it stands. Um, let's see that. Both the, the architect and the homeowner um, have, have requested that the, the lighting on the facade is very subtle. Um, that's really what we aim to, aim to do here is just give a, a soft touch of light um, really to give both safety and security and, and a nice uh, a nice wash on the house um, for balance um, and it kind of break up it's it's right on the drive there's a small patch of of uh, plants that are going to be planted in in between the house and the drive but it's really to soften the connection there As we go around to the back, uh, the large trees here, um, we hope to highlight their, their large, uh, I believe they're evergreens, uh, they're, they're very large, I believe spruces. Um, they'd be lit with a, with a large well. Uh, in your packets, you should have some cut sheets of the fixtures, uh, and those are actually recessed in the ground, so you don't actually see the fixtures themselves. Um, this also lowers the, the bulb. So that way, from a glare perspective from other properties, you wouldn't have any glare. Um, walking around to the back, uh, the yellow lights, those are path lights um, for safety, security, uh, and to give really just a soft touch on steps and, and the terraces. Um, there's, a, there's a small patch of existing trees here that we'd like to light. Uh, so that they have some a, a break between their their terrace here and and the neighbors, obviously to the south, um, to just give a, a nice separation there, um, along with the lights that would be highlighting mature trees. I believe three large mature trees in the lawn would be the same large well fixtures, uh, and then into the to the garden area, um, which is actually, there's a path that, that works through the garden uh, that we're really trying to softly highlight the ornamental trees in there. So you have a nice meandering path to walk through at night um, is really the intent there. Uh, one other image I'd like to show is that west property line. As it stands now, before any further plantings go in, uh, you can see it's it's densely planted with evergreens. Um, really, for a year-round effect, your the neighbor to the west will get uh, little to no light shed at all on their property, and should should have no um, view of the actual fixtures. So, I, I would I would suspect there would be no glare um, at all, considering. Um, any of the fixtures in that garden space. I believe that's all I have. 
All right, thank you very much. Staff report. Thank you, Chairman. Um, at the request of the Commission, this uh, landscape lighting plan is before you for consideration. Uh, when the Commission reviewed the project back in February, I believe, of last year, um, one of the conditions of approval was that if landscape lighting is proposed, that a plan be brought forward um, so that uh, you could issue a certificate of appropriateness for that type of improvement. Um, in general, the lighting um, is kept to a minimum and is really used to highlight key landscape features um, and to provide some depth to the lawn. Um, given the um, nature of the subdivision, um, there, there, are some, there is some language in the subdivision agreement um, to provide enhanced screening and make sure that the structures are, are screened at all times. Uh, the approved landscape plan that was associated with the um, building project that was approved addressed uh, some of that and really did um, increase the, the landscaping on the property. Um, one concern that was identified in the staff report is for um, the front facade and the lighting that's proposed between the front of the house and the east property line. Um, there really isn't a, um, there is no large trees proposed on the lawn um, in the driveway area. And um, the condition of approval that's noted in the staff report is to really look at that after installation and really make sure that uh, the lighting um, for that area in particular, but for the whole project as a whole, um, is consistent with the character of the property and really doesn't provide a negative impact to surrounding properties. Um, I do believe the house to the east um, is vacant right now. I, I guess I shouldn't say that, but um, we didn't hear any comment from, my point is we didn't hear any comment from, from the neighbor, but um, I think it's a consideration that the commission should um, put into this discussion. Um, if um, the condition of approval as written in the staff report um, is, is uh, I, I, think I could see it being modified that we do a mock-up before installation instead of let it be installed and then evaluate. So I think we can work with the petitioner on, on that um, to get it right the first time. And uh, can I ask a technical question? Um, if this was being proposed by a homeowner in the historic district but hadn't been a condition of a prior approval for anything, would this be a permit that you would grant through normal administrative process, or would this be something that we would see? Um, we do have a, a landscape lighting ordinance in place. This, does, it, this is consistent with that ordinance. Um, I would say that the up lighting on the house, because it's part of um, a structure on the site, we would bring this type of request to the commission. Okay, but if it weren't for the up lighting on the house, maybe it might be approved as an administrative issue for you, you get to make that judgment, I guess, on a case-by-case -case basis. I see. All right, thank you. Um, any other questions for the petitioner or the staff from the commissioners? All, all the lighting that's proposed, is it all up lighting or in ground, none, none of it? It is. The path lighting um, is not up lighting. It is, it is downward facing. What's, the, what's the, height, the greatest height that any of the lighting is? is proposed that would as far as the fixture height the fixture height. Um, yeah. the path lights would be no more than 18 inches at most um, they're really actually set in the there's a boxwood hedge um, they're meant to be hidden in the hedge so you wouldn't even see them uh, to project out now the, the proposed up lighting once these fixtures are in place and aimed to where they're proposed to be is there can they be moved? Are they adjustable? Everything that's installed would be line voltage, um, which is installed in pipe, heavy wall. Um, and it is not adjustable. It's not, the fixture itself is not movable. I'm not, I'm not talking about lighting. the fixture being movable. Um, it I'm is talking adjustable. about the beam being, being adjusted into different directions. It, yes, there is adjustment um, on, the, on the fixtures in the planting beds. Um, there is, you can adjust the heads themselves. Um, the fixtures in the lawn being a well light is, is straight up. Okay. Uh, so you don't, you don't have any. And where, the, can, you, can you show me on where the planting beds are? Where, where, yes, where so this is your plant, uh, everything to the left of this line is planting space. Um, this is all in the lawn here. 
Um, these three are planting space. So just if you bear with me, that mm -hmm. once those are in place and they're aimed the way that the, that the homeowner wants and you, you want and the city approves, over time they may be adjusted one way or the other that, that is you know, no longer consistent with what I see. With the city originally looked at. Is that correct? Uh, if you so wanted to, um, I mean, there's really a good way to light the tree effectively. Um, the, the majority of these, the smaller circles are ornamental trees, so they're multi-stemmed. Um, well, I'm not saying there's not a preferable way, a step yeah, way I, that, that the homeowner may like. If, it's, you know, just, we, just we have obviously nature takes its toll and, and snow mm -hmm. loads and things fall over um, <clears throat> in the winter time, uh, if, if that's kind of the yeah. direction you're going. You know, I, yeah, I, well, my direction I'm going is at some point the, the light that's going up the tree may be going into somebody's yard uh, and nobody's, you know, you know, th there it is and nobody has done anything about it. And sure. The homeowner who, who, you know, who's adjacent to it, you know, has to then deal with that in one way or the other, you know. And, I think. And so th that's my concern. I, you know, I, I have a very great sensitivity to these light issues. I live in Whispering Oaks and, you know, I live on Beverly and there's, you know, large oak stands and mm -hmm. Sheridan Road and the train tracks and you know and I still get light from the Fort Sheridan Cemetery in my second floor, floor bedroom enough that you know it bothers me at times yeah. so I can understand you know the sensitivity to, to, to light you know and I have a lot more than 50 feet or 100 feet between me and those lights you know sure. I have you know close to a quarter mile so so it's it's a concern as far as the ordinance goes um, is there how, how do we measure the, the number of lights that can be put in or the density or the, how how they're maintained those types of issues uh, the ordinance does have a um, maximum light output at the property lines not to, uh, not to exceed number um, with respect to and the if, light I'm output I'm sorry to interrupt you and is that measured as they're placed and pointed or is that measured by the number of candles that may be illuminated at maximum? It's measured at as foot candles at the property line. So at the property line, um, you cannot exceed 0.5 foot candles of that light output. So if you were to, again, it goes back to my my concern. So if you were to take these lights and, and point them straight at the property line, that's how it's measured? Or is it measured when they're in place being pointed at, up the tree or, or up the the bush or against the building or whatever. Let me answer that question by describing a little bit more of the, the guidelines because okay, I sorry. think it might be addressed. So there's the, foot, there's the foot candle um, requirement, but there's also a requirement that the um, lights be, be aimed interior to the, the property line so as not to be viewed from neighboring properties. Um, we also have uh, limitation on the number of light fixtures in the front of a house. Um, so in this, in this case, the front would be considered along the private drive to minimize impact um, from a streetscape perspective. Um, and then we also have, um, within the guideline, um, a setback requirement for light fixtures. So they, can, they cannot be directly on the property line pointing at your neighbor's house. Oh, and Mr. Niak is, is reminding me that we are approving um, a specific plan, and the measurements are based on the plan as proposed. So the, the light output is, is based on this particular plan that we're looking at. And once the plan's approved and inadvertently the, 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 the plan is deviated from, uh, how, how is that addressed at, at the city level? Certainly if we received a complaint from a neighboring property owner and found that the um, property is inconsistent with the approved plan, we would have the ability to, to take some action through a nuisance complaint. Okay. Um, well, those, those are my concern. Obviously, I, I, I'm of, you know, I think lighting can enhance any landscape, and I certainly uh, understand the homeowner's uh, desires to have, have uh, you know, certain lighting. 
uh, done. You know, when I drive around the city and I see, you know, landscape lighting, I really do think it has a great effect uh, on certain properties. But I, I do have that concern, and I guess um, my thought is, you know, as little as as can can be used to accomplish the homeowner's goals is obviously preferable and you know and um, the expectation that they be good neighbors and make sure that the lighting right. stays as as it's been approved by the, the this board would would also be preferable and I'm sure uh, I'm, I'm sure they would, it would do those things I have a question do you put these lights on timers so they go off in the middle of the night Yes, that is a, it's actually part okay. of the, the okay. ordinance okay. Um, that they need to be turned off by 11 uh, by a timer. Um, so yeah, that is in. That is all in the ordinance. lights or just the lights on the trees? Uh, that's, well, that's all the landscape lights. Oh, okay. So anything that's not attached to the house, um, as far as I know. Even the pathway, those go off of Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So help us out on that one, Megan. Uh, does that, in this case, does that include the, the lights that are lighting the front of the house too? That would include the, the lights that washing the wall um, it would exclude any security lighting I see thank you other questions I'll ask if there's any public uh, comments and I see none so we'll move right on to deliberations we have a tendency to co-join the questions and the deliberations which is great um, yeah I'm with you Bill I mean I see this as you know possible very nice feature for the home and I also see it as a possible real potential pain for an adjacent homeowner so I'm real sensitive to it myself and I really like um, lighting when it's like you know as you enter the driveway and there's a few kind of select locations and at the end of the driveway and the path lighting doesn't give me any heartburn at all um, but if I were a Jason house and I was looking at this property and the house was lit up extraordinarily bright or even the backyard in this case the west side of the lawn it was felt like a you know more like a theme park than a residential kind of accent situation I, I don't think I'd be such a fan um, so I'm not sure exactly how we resolve that it's really hard to estimate from this picture and from these descriptions of how bright this will be and how this will feel to the neighbor um, so I'm open to suggestions. Mm -hmm. or well, isn't, isn't, isn't that what the ordinance does? I mean, it, it establishes a threshold that we feel like is non-invasive or manageable for the surrounding properties. I'm sure that's the Based intent. on, yeah, so how good is that ordinance? How long has it been in effect? I mean, I think we have to think that it's constructed with... Um, the best interests of neighborhoods and the aesthetics that we're talking about. And uh, so Megan, how long is that, has that lighting ordinance been in effect? And how many complaints do we get in the city that are around the issue of lighting on, on average for a year? Um, the ordinance has probably been around for um, about 10 to 12 years. Um, and Mr. Niak might be able to speak more about that ordinance. Um, we do occasionally get complaints about lighting, um, you know, maybe one or two a year, and, and sometimes we do have problems. Um, I think the important thing is that um, we do do an inspection once this is installed to really identify if uh, the proposed direction of lighting is appropriate, if additional screening is needed, or sometimes if just the intensity of light mm -hmm. needs to come down. Because it is, it is a real issue for neighbors, and mm -hmm. I think if, if property owners want to light their own property, uh, the city has been supportive of that, but this is, in general, a very dark community, so the lighting is really intended to, to only impact that property. So is, is the ordinance conservative in that the, the people or the property owners that complain uh, are complaining about adjacent properties that are within the ordinance? Or are they people that have kind of gone wild with the lighting and have lit up every statue and, and their Ferraris and other things? Normally the complaints are about lighting that's been put in without any permits or without any review okay. city of so, so gross violations that, that you keep an eye on that are 
I guess, uh, black and white, no pun intended. If, <laughs> um, I can't recall a situation where we've actually approved a landscape plan where we've had ongoing complaints. Normally, if we've approved a landscape plan mm -hmm. and there's, there are a few lights on our problems, we're able to address that mm -hmm. because there's been an overall plan approved. Mm -hmm. But it is those situations where someone has just gone mm -hmm. out and um, yeah. done so, it. So it's safe to say if this plan conforms to the ordinance mm -hmm. and it's approved and you go in and inspect it to plan as it's built, that we could say that we'd be 99% certain that there wouldn't be any complaints emerging? Or do you see this property based on its size and scope and the number of lights in the various positions and how many properties that it, it abuts that there could be issues? I think that in this case, we, we worked very closely with the homeowner, worked very closely with uh, um, both the architects and, and the other uh, design professionals working on the property. And uh, I think we have a, a good working relationship, so I'm confident that um, with the condition that we monitor this as it's installed, I'm confident that this will be a successful project. Thanks. Any other Thank comments, you. deliberations? I do. Um, how much input did the landscape architect have in the lighting? We provide them with a the design, and then we review it with them, and they give us their feedback. Um, so that they, they, you know, they like to guide us uh, to what's kind of the more appropriate features that they'd like to see lit. Um, and then we kind of come together and, and make sure it makes sense for both of us. Great. So it worked for the landscape architect? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, the only other thing that I could think of is what we've done with lighting that's been so like unknown and worrisome is that we've done a mock-up, but that's mostly on like public buildings, yeah. really. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, comforted a lot by the questions you were asking, Jim, and the response of the staff on that. And so that, I think that's, uh, for me, that puts me over that issue. I mm -hmm. mean, I think, uh, I think, you know, I'm comfortable with the staff's ability to evaluate the ordinance and understand whether or not, you know, they're complying with that and whether they're complying with the spirit of mm -hmm. it as well. So uh, in that case, I'm okay. You know, I don't, uh, you know, this is a, a really well executed design. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm confident that the architect and the landscape architect and everybody else has been looking this over and being, you know, careful to make sure that it's just as carefully crafted as the rest of the solution. So in that case, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good to go on this one myself. Yeah, so. I think the, the staff review is fine for me, but I'm just wondering for you, Bill, do you think that maybe... No, it, it, it's it? fine <laughs> for me, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, hard to um, police it or know it just because of the nature of what's trying to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. And so... I think the condition uh, that the staff put in their recommendation would be enough to of a protection or about as much protection as we can possibly give. You know, I, I certainly wouldn't want to uh, make the homeowner go through a mock-up, uh, yes. have us trudge out there in the <laughs> middle of February or <laughs> at night to see, <laughs> see how this is going. Um, not that I wouldn't do that uh, as, <laughs> as part of my uh, work at, on the commission if it became necessary. Um, but I think there's flexibility f with the staff and the condition of approval and there is enough to, to, to move forward. I'm comfortable moving forward with it. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or deliberations? Oh, uh, comment. I, I think the example that's provided with the package mm -hmm. uh, shows a very pleasing result and uh, very attractive. I think this is going to be uh, a real uh, benefit to not only the owner, but anybody who views the property driving by or living near it. So I, I commend the, uh, the entire uh, proposal. And I just would add, I think the project is in the hands of very competent professionals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if that were not the case, I could uh, have all kinds of concerns, but I think we've got the mm -hmm. people doing the work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I, I, I move to approve the petition as submitted uh, with the caveat that the city put in uh, to just, I guess, designate um, approval or to monitor the intensity of the lighting um, as it's installed. Second. All right, the motion's been made by Commissioner Parshalak and seconded by Commissioner Swenson. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I see none, so congratulations. Good Thank luck you. with that. Uh, and we have, uh, we have one final agenda item, I believe. Well, maybe we have more than one, or at least more than one. 
Uh, this is a consideration of proposed amendments to Chapter 51 of the City Code, Historic Preservation as pre prepared by the City Attorney and relating to procedures and standards. Uh, I think we're going to have a staff presentation on this one, so we'll let uh, Kathy uh, tell us all about it. Thank you. Uh, just a brief staff presentation. I would note that the uh, Commission had an executive session with the City Attorney earlier tonight. Um, this code amendment is the result of litigation that has been ongoing for a number of years. It's, it's litigation um, filed by uh, the Moors uh, against the uh, Ferris Project. This is a project on, on Vine Avenue that uh, um, was approved by the commission and then reapproved a number of years ago. The project is complete. Uh, the house is occupied, but this lawsuit has been ongoing. The city was brought into the lawsuit um, and the a uh, portion of, of the ordinance was challenged, uh, the portion which allowed the Historic Preservation Commission to grant a variance from the building scale ordinance. Um, much like we do with variances from the zoning code, the amendments, uh, which are reflected on page 7, on page 18 and 20, um, now would make the, the commission a recommending body on building scale variances. Those variances would then go before the city council for final approval, again, consistent with the, uh, the procedure used for zoning variances. Um, although it, this does result in the commission not being the, the final body taking action on the building scale ordinance, um, it really would not alter the commission's deliberation um, or the commission's responsibility to carefully evaluate any request for a building scale variance based on the, the standards in the code. Um, with that, st staff does recommend approval. Again, this was put forward by the city attorney um, in direct response to uh, the litigation and uh, the opinion of the judge that an amendment was needed to uh, strengthen and conform our ordinance uh, to state statutes. So if you choose to do so, it would be appropriate to recommend approval of this uh, and we will forward it on to the City Council. And, and that's just a re recommendation that the City Council approve? It is a recommendation to the, your vote on this would be a recommendation to the City Council. City Council is the body that, that needs to act on code amendments. All right, any questions or comments? And I see none, we've had the benefit of some information on this in our executive session. Uh, any public comments or questions on this? And I see none, so I'll ask you. Yeah, can I just make one real quick Sure, note, please. Because <clears throat> after our executive session, I, I do have a little concern that this might reduce our authority in the future. Okay. Um, and, you know, maybe not given this kind of circumstance, but um, I just have a concern with that, that it would reduce the authority of the HBC to make be the final body in yeah. the future. Um, that's just my personal opinion. So. Well, I'll, I'll just pick up that real quick. Um, we're not now. We, we uh, any decision we make can be appealed right. to city council. So they are the final authority in that event, uh, no matter what. They can choose not to not to hear an appeal, uh, but they can hear, choose to hear an appeal too. So I think they're in a very similar situation, whether they, um, whether they have the final vote or whether they have the right to hear an appeal, they, they get the, the last word. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that they will continue to um, uh, have as much reliance upon us in the future as they do now. So I'm comfortable that that's the case, but I would, uh, you know, counsel, counsel them to continue to, to think about us that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 I hear you, but I, I, I'm, I'm comforted by the fact that they can hear an appeal on anything we, we do anyway. Yeah. So. Which they recently have done. Yeah. Oh, no, they didn't recently do that. They actually um, asked us to uh, recommend something, but that was not an appeal. Uh, that was a change mm -hmm. of the historic district, which we don't have the authority to rule on. We have the authority to recommend on that. Um, so they didn't change a ruling on us. They just asked for a recommendation, and they, and they then took that to the next step. So that's a different kind of issue, but it's along the same lines. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have the right to override mm -hmm. us in almost every event, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm, I mean I had the same concern, obviously, and, but I I don't think it's gonna um, it's gonna retard the you know the I guess the teeth of this of this um, commission to fight for preservation. I think that's a reason 
why we have to have thoughtful people on the commission yeah. and dedicated people to think through the issue. And to Kurt's point, we're just as vulnerable yeah. um, now as we, this is this is kind of semantic. Um, I, I would say that if you think about our last two years, at least since I've been on any scale issue that's come up, we, we really haven't, we've kind of punted, right? And we've defaulted to, well, it's, it's, it's in violation of that and that's you know brb or somebody else but no sorry you know so i think we've been pretty cautious on saying we can kind of rule on that anyways you know we haven't really exercised that option too much at least i haven't felt like it um we've been very conservative on it and i don't know that the you know the city council is going to change that um yeah, I'm not get, I'm not too concerned about them going wild. Yeah, I mean, right? <laughs> I, I don't. So. Well, I'm thinking I'm long term concerned. too. Yeah. You know, I mean, long term, city council could change. Yeah, political could, environment could be different. Yeah, yeah but we're. Well, we're, that's we're so, I mean, so can this. We serve at the benefit of the city council at, at any at any time. So I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, from my yeah. point of view, that can change it as well. So yeah. I don't I, see it. I agree with what everybody has been saying. My take on this uh, is just slightly different though um, I understand what the city attorney said of, and, and the effect of the litigation my only question to the members of this commission is is it appropriate for the commissioners to say we recommend you take more pow power away from us you know um, you know we're, we're put in here to to you know protect the historic nature of this. And the city council can take whatever power they want away from us. They can remove us as commissioners and they can do whatever they want. I'm just wondering if we set a precedent by saying, we recommend you take this away from us. You know, I, I, I think, you know, it, are, are we abdicating well, something by doing that? I, I just put it out there for discussion. You know, I, I'm. That's interesting. I mean, you know, it's an interesting point. Um, well, I, I think if we if we feel like it's not going to compromise our mission, yeah. then we can't, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point. Yeah. I, and that's I mean, what we've been talking I, about. Actually, I think it's kind of an unusual situation for uh, for a for any commission inside a, a government structure to not go to city council for the final word. It's, I think right. it's just unusual. It's, I don't think it happens very often in the world. So, I mean, I think in this case, they've, and, and by the way, we were talking about a specific, you know, narrow kind of portion about what we, what we rule on. It's specifically bulk. Right. So they're not asking for the final word on whether the window's in the right spot or whether the <laughs> garage is, you know, should be turned sideways or whether the dormers look good. They really don't want to be like right. involved in that. I'm pretty right. sure that's why they created this body to begin with. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, Really, I'm perfectly comfortable with it myself. I'm not. I'm. If they, I hear what the purpose is. Um, I'm comfortable recommending that they find a resolution in this specific case, for you know, for, for how the, the, there there could be a legal challenge to some authority of mm -hmm. you know uh, the process. Uh, we don't want an imperfect process, so I'm okay for you know making sure that the process is mm -hmm. uh, would stand up. Um, so. Uh, you know, I don't. I really don't see it as a big change myself. That's my. That's my thoughts on it. So I'm, I was just going to emphasize that point that mm -hmm. what what this is doing is really tightening our ordinance from challenges. Uh, this the mm -hmm. the party that brought this lawsuit uh, was not successful in in just uh, a lawsuit against the neighbor. Therefore, brought in the city and challenged the ordinance. So right. the ordinance has been challenged right. in order to close that that piece of vulnerability, which just has to do with the building scale variance piece, um, this is really closing that gap and hopefully protecting the ordinance from challenge. So right, yeah, so I mean, I mean, I mean, to just take the counterpoint to Bill's point, it's incumbent upon us to protect the ordinance and if it's being challenged, then, then we need to be part of a solution that's balanced with the governance structure that's consistent with what Kurt's talking about around the city council being at the center and us still being very proactive and vibrant. Uh, part of that, to, you know, to preserve the, the character of this town. And it's a kind of a red herring here. I mean, we're, this, this commission's not going away, guys. I mean, we're no. not, I mean, it's, it's not being neutered by this. Yeah. It's, um, it's protecting the ordinance and, uh, and the governance structure from an appeal process is, is already there at the council. And I think 
the, the, the effectiveness of this board, it'll be guaranteed by the caucus system to get good people to come here. The, um, you know, the ordinance is stronger than most, I don't know any other town that has the same process. And I, I think we're a long way away from it, you know, being in jeopardy. There's always been a scenario where you have a city council full of folks that aren't really preservationists at all, and they can undermine what we do. But that's, I mean, that's there and that's, that's there. So <laughs> this doesn't change it. Yeah, I, you know, it, I, I understand the ordinance has been challenged, but I also understand ordinances are challenged all mm -hmm. over the state every single day of the week. And, you know, the, the municipalities don't always, and maybe the, the, this, in this case, that's preferable, um, preferable tax of city or city municipalities don't always amend their ordinance because of that challenge. I, I don't disagree with what the city attorney is recommending. I, my problem is philosophically, as a board, do we recommend that power be taken away when we are, you know, agreed to serve on this commission to hold the power to preserve, you know, the historic nature? City council can do it. I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm just not completely comfortable with it, you know. Rec well, how is so it whether whether we should be recommending that they take power away? Well, from I think how is this change? Look at it as as your well. You, it's it's you how know, is this it's, how is this change going to detriment maybe, detriment to our charter? Maybe it doesn't do. change it, but so you know we set a precedent. Well, no, I said maybe, Jim. <laughs> I said maybe it doesn't change it. I mean, obviously, yeah. it, it it will change it uh, without question. You know, we will no longer have that power. It will change it without without question. City council can, you know, if they can appeal everything that we do already, we never had that power. Well, it's, I mean, it, I, I don't except for the city attorney wants us to change the ordinance so people won't file lawsuits based on based on that. You know. Well, I mean, I that's mean, you're, you're, that's the that's the that's a little too. Um, Simple a read on it. I mean, I think that the that the way he would word it would be more along the lines of we've discovered that there's a potential legal flaw in our ordinance and we'd like to correct it, right? I mean, that's I, that's I think that's the way you have to think about it. Whether the whether an appointed body has the legislative power to do this, we know that city council does. We just don't know if a appointed body does, or we don't maybe even agree. We don't. I don't know how he would put that, but he obviously thinks he can perfect the ordinance by making this minor change to it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with that. I think that from my point of view, um, I, 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 don't, I don't see uh, the process playing out any differently. You know, I don't see city council all of a sudden getting presentations with models on uh, bulk. Uh, no, I, 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 I don't either. Yeah. I, I don't either. Yeah. I just, I, I agree with you, Bill, because it, you know, we've got to think of different types of scenarios. I mean, we're all reasonable now. Yeah. <clears throat> and everything you know is reasonable, but you know the scenario where well, potentially we it could reasonable. be influenced what if, what politically <laughs> by someone who doesn't approve of that vote ordinance. I mean, there is the possibility, yeah. and that's. I mean, I'm just saying there's the potential. We're saying the precedent. It's just my concern about the future of the board. And who says that maybe not that you know maybe our demo will be challenged or then once we go back to the board and we have to. I don't know. It was just a concern I had about yeah, well, the Well, theoretically, um, it's a check and balance. I mean, think about, forget about the system. I mean, you can think about it as, oh, we're giving away power. Uh, go ahead if you want. But it, in government, the checks and balances are what the whole deal is. You know, So the check and balance today is, is that we have the right to approve stuff, and they have the right to hear an appeal if they don't like our hearing. The check and balance is just continue to be, we have the right to recommend stuff, and they have the right to do final approval on it. I don't see it as any different. For bulk, for, and frankly, uh, I the only thing, the only time I can see them wanting to jump in the fray is if we do something that is unreasonable. You know, why would they want to take on a marginal change in bulk of, that is built around the design of a, pro, you know, building that's responding to some historic requirement or some reference in the community that's better if we allow the house to be slightly larger? They don't want to do that, but if we approve something that's, you know. 40% over bulk because, you know. And when have we ever done that? We've never done no, that. No, we're not going to do would, it. We don't do it. That's yes. my whole point. So, I mean, I just don't see it, or, you know, yeah. it could happen, but it could happen yeah. now. You know, go ahead, Fred. Well, I just want to visit that point. I was about to bring up uh, just the scenario where um, 
bulk is connected to the historic considerations. I have no problem with bulk being a separate issue by itself that we don't need to address. We're not bulk people, we're historic people. Yeah. But we have had uh, some historic homes, uh, dated you know, vintage homes come before us where they have, say, a very large attic, they're very steep roofs, very prominent structures, and uh, attics are big. And when you, We've been through a few in the last few years where uh, if, uh, on a strictly technical basis, you could say they're over bulk and they want to put an addition on. And there's been calculation by staff as to uh, what's usable in that attic that can be considered. You know, it, it got very technical. Mm -hmm. Point being that um, the recommendation from the HPC was that I won't say they'd be permitted to exceed bulk, bulk but we felt that that it was important to the historic considerations that they that they not be uh, you know uh, shot down because of a technical measurement on bulk. Now. That threw us into the bulk area connected with his the historic recommendation. And if they're separated, the council's ruling on bulk, and we're looking at the history. I don't know if they uh, if that would be de detrimental in its result. And I may not be visioning envisioning what the impact of this would be if bulk is taken away from our considerations. That's, well, that's all. You know, I, I I'm not sure that maybe I'm not expressing myself. And I hear what you're saying. Well, I you know. I, it's not that you know the system isn't set up now that you know there can be an appeal to the city council and the city council uh, in all reality in all function is the final arbiter of anything we do here it's that I'm not sure that we should recommend to the city council that they take this power away from us because of the precedent it set, it set. The city council can still do that, and in all likelihood, I believe it probably will do that. I'm just saying as commissioners who are uh, chartered with certain things, giving up the power is, is you know, recommending that we, you take this away from us, you know, I think philosophically goes against with why we're here. Okay, so, so, okay, so, so let's say, the, so we don't do it, and the lawsuit comes, and they strike down our ordinance, and HPC, and they say, well, it's, well, it's invalid. Well, uh, this goes back to like what, right, what I mean, Kurt I mean, was saying. If we don't recommend it, the city council is still going to do what it's going to do. The, this we're just recommending something, something about. Well, but let, let, let's put it in a different light. We're, we're, the way that you're discussing it and and thinking about it is as though we are. It's us against them, and I and I'm not thinking about it that way. I'm thinking about it as this is one community, this is one governmental body that's kind of all holding hands, trying to work together. And the ordinance is supposed to interact with each other. We're all supposed to, you know, dance at the same time and play the same notes, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking about the city council. I'm thinking about what their job is, and I'm thinking, you know, gee, what are you know, what are they trying to resolve out of this, you know? And I'm, and I'm sympathetic to what they have to resolve, and I understand why they would need to do this. And because I understand it, and I understand that their need to, to, to approve this, I also understand it from the position of the chairman of the board that, that will be ceding some power here. And I say, yeah, it's okay. I think it's okay. I don't think that they're gonna take that and go do something stupid with it because we're all playing on the same team. You know, I'm not worried right. about it. It's, it's not the other side of the aisle. I don't have to right. raise money uh, with, in a pack group to fight them next semester. Right. You know, so, it's like I just don't I don't see it as a philosophical giving up power. I never had the power. It's, I'm just serving at their at their uh, pleasure, you know. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, to, I'm, I'm yeah, not. Sorry. I don't think it's. I, I'm not thinking it's of us against them. I know, but it's but I, it, but I, the I, power well, is not. It's, you know, it, that's what it yeah, sounds it, like. It, it, it sounds like what, what, we have a rational, different yeah. position about it. Yeah, like we have to fight for our existence. Like we're smarter than them on this issue. I, I, <laughs> Well, I agree with you, and I agree with Jim, but maybe just coming off the Barra decision, maybe that's kind of what you're thinking, that, that we were all, you know, of one mind, and they were of another, and we were just on um, sort of opposing teams in that respect. Maybe that's kind of in the back Well, of I, I would prefer not to go down that path, but I think that the difference was that given our charter, at the moment that we were asked to recommend a removal of that property from the historic preservation group, we did not have the criteria to allow us to make any other action than what we did. Right. So we weren't considering the same kinds of criteria that they were considering, right or wrong. 
on this issue, they will have to consider it on the same criteria that we have to consider. Mm -hmm. So that's they have to right. act exactly yes. in alignment right. with what we would that's do. Right. So it's just, it's just kicking it up a notch, but they have the same agenda that we have. That's they right. have the same criteria that we have. That's right. So. Good point. So Barrett will come back. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's over bulk. <laughs> All right. Put that in the yeah. I will oh, call a question on this one, whether you like it or not, and I will ask if someone wants to make a motion. And I got nobody wants well, to make I, a I make a motion that we approve the uh, proposed amendments to the HPC ordinance uh, that we um, walk through at the executive uh, session. All right. It is proposed by the city attorney. Is that a clear enough motion for you, Kathy? All right. I, the motion's been made by Commissioner Preschlack. Do I have a second? Can I second it, too? Or? I don't know. Can no, I no. second it? No. Mm -hmm. I'll second the motion. Seconded by Commissioner Peretz. All in favor, please speak clearly. Say aye. 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 All right. It's one, two, three, four. All opposed, say no. Nay. So that's Commissioner Ransom and Commissioner Athenson. Athenson. It's late. <laughs> that were opposed. So that passes. And thank you for the lively debate on that topic. I'm sure that uh, Vic will be glad he left early. And we will convey uh, the various points of view um, as part of presentation of this to the City Council. All right. Uh, let's see. We have the opportunity for the public to address the Historic Preservation Commission on non-agenda items. And I, do I see anyone that would like care to do that? Come on up and introduce yourself. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Parrots and members of the board. My name is Leon Falcone. I live at 930 Lake Road, and I wish to speak about Historic Forest Park tonight. Oh. On the 3rd of January, Friends of Forest Park sent a copy of a letter to Ralph Jishwoldo, to the Mayor, Ms. Cerniak, Mr. Kari, Mrs. Ford and Van Arsdale, and to you, Chairman Parrots, to share with your board. The letter was dated November the 11th and laid out our recommended guiding principles for creating an, en an enduring visit vision for Historic Forest Park and we detailed objectives that could lead to a successful planning effort. We asked that the master plan reflect a quintessential O.C. Simons Park, that it be a passive park united in, into one park between the beach and the S-Bar and Forest Park that the ring road and the parking be retained as a vehicular pedestrian roadway for all citizens to enjoy and that the city vote to retain both. We ask for transparency with the Forest Park Project Board and that we would have public meetings and that we also ask that we have one representative from the city who could cover engineering and forestry and community development and parks so that we'd all be on the same page. And we took that letter and we asked for signatures for support with it. People from 29 residences along Lake Road put pen to paper in support of our requests. And that means that two thirds of the people on the street felt strongly enough to support our letter to Mr. Jesualdo. Recently, we asked Mr. Jesualdo again for a response to our letter, and he mentioned that he had answered our letter in his public letter to the community that was published in the Gazebo News and the Pioneer Press. And today we rewrote to Mr. Jesualdo because he has asked to meet us, but we would like an answer to our letter first so that we could have a basis upon which to, to, to start a discussion for coordinating our suggestions and new plans. We understand that there is a new plan by Mr. Stimson and we have many questions concerning it. If there is one, when would we be able to see it? As Mr. Stimson is a modernist landscape architect, will his plan follow the historic guidelines for the East Lake Forest Historic District? And what are your historic standards for the amenities, for example? 
In Mr. Joe Waldo's letter to the community, he spoke of making Forest Park a cultural landscape. And what does that mean to the city of Lake Forest? Could you please tell us how does a cultural landscape designation translate into the cities and your review of this plan when it comes? And we would appreciate your answering that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, you have uh, lots of questions that uh, we also have as well. Um, I think I'll ask Kathy, I, I know that this is on our agenda coming up this spring, so I'll, I think the best thing for us to do is to get from staff kind of a, a schedule of when that will play out so we'll understand it. We haven't seen anything since the last formal submittal, um, okay. and I do want to uh, remind um, uh, the uh, commissioners and the public that uh, we're not supposed to communicate in mass with each other. Uh, we, we prefer if uh, there's communications to us that it occur through staff so that it can mm -hmm. be on the public record and uh, so that it can be um, dispersed to us for consideration. So if you send something to me to distribute to my commission, I did not distribute it <laughs> because I'm not okay. supposed to do that. I'm supposed to uh, report back to, to the city staff. So that should go, a copy of that letter should go to the city staff, please. It uh, was so sent can, to the city. Yeah, thank you. But please uh, sh uh, lay out the schedule for us so we know when that uh, we can anticipate starting to hear more about this. Uh, tentatively, we do expect Forest Park to come before you at your February meeting. I don't know the exact date of that meeting, but it is the fourth uh, Wednesday of the month. Um, our understanding is that that will be presented. Um, you've already had informational presentations on Forest Park, but, but that will be a, really a presentation to begin your... Uh, formal deliberation. Uh, we would expect that you would open a public hearing. Um, our understanding is that, assuming it does come before you in February, that they would be looking for input both from the Commission and from members of the public, and that it would be scheduled not on your March um, meeting, not for your March meeting, but would be brought back in April, um, where you would be asked to take final action. Any correspondence that, that we have received or do receive prior to that will be included all together in a packet. Uh, we would expect to get an updated plan from them, uh, some additional detail. Um, we uh, are working with you to schedule uh, some individual tours of Forest Park, which we would like to do before the next meeting. And then if, if it would be helpful again, we could do that uh, between the February and April meetings as well. Um, we encourage you to continue to meet with or to communicate with the Forest Park Project Board. That is uh, a separate body, uh, although they are communicating and, and requesting some input from staff. That is the group that will be making the presentation. Um, I know that they are interested in meeting with friends of Forest Park. Um, but um, So, uh, I'm sorry, remind me, the last time we met we had a joint meeting with the uh, parks. Um, Will that be the case this time, or will it be? No, based on formal uh, consideration, uh, you will consider it. And I believe the, the um, Park and Rec Board, and uh, we would need to check the web to confirm the meeting date, but I believe they will meet maybe the night after you. Okay. Um, and you haven't seen the plan yet either, so you're anticipating some of this stuff. But do we anticipate that we will be making recommendations, ruling on specific um, HPC uh, agenda items, or is that not yet determined? Um, I have not seen the master plan. Okay. Um, my expectation at some point, um, I don't know what will come before you in February, but my expectation would be that you will receive a master plan and that as the Historic Preservation Commission, you will be asked to make a recommendation on the master plan to the City Council. There may be some aspects of that plan that may either come forward at the same time or may come back later. For instance, I would expect at some point you would be asked to consider a certificate of appropriateness uh, for a signage plan for the park. Uh, those, those are structures that, that would be a very specific element where you would look at location, style, number, materials, um, any amenities in the park, uh, much as the commission did with uh, Market Square, uh, you may look at um, trash cans, uh, benches, water fountains. Now, whether those will all come forward as part of the plan, 
Uh, master plans can be adopted and then pieces of, of that plan can be funded and come back incrementally. Um, but once we have the plan, we'll be able to give you a better idea of what action you'll be out asked to take in the short term and what will need to come back to you in the future. So Kathy, what, what does the Park and Rec Board review then? Uh, they will review operational and maintenance aspects. Hmm. And they will be asked to make a recommendation on the plan. So uh, the City Council will receive recommendations from both bodies. When will the uh, <coughs> Forest Park uh, Project Board submit the master plan to the city? How far in advance of the the February meeting. I, I don't know the exact date. We will certainly need it uh, if we are going to do some tours with. Yeah, there you go. And will with this be, group, will it be available for review by the public prior to the? It will be, and and again, I'd encourage um, you to contact the project board. And I know they've expressed a willingness to meet, to sit down and meet. Uh, yes, they have had some they, staff meetings with them as well. They they have asked, but. But we have asked that they please respond to our letter first because it's so appropriate to to the new design, and, and we have not had a comment on it yet, yeah. Miss. That's Ernie. not something that we could mm. force. We, sure. The right, city right. is not mm. in control of the project board. Mm. I encourage you to communicate, but I can't yes. tell you how they will communicate back. I, I know that if to me all. they have expressed an interest. But, in but I would encourage you to not take a combative attitude with them just because they didn't answer the letter. They may have a reason not to put something in writing. They might want to hear your thoughts and have time to modify their plans. So I, I would always encourage a dialogue when you when there can be one. Um, we're not sending carriers to them. So thank um, you. But but uh, Mr. Jesuoto has said he is open to it. Uh, to all sorts of suggestions, but we have yet to hear from him on our suggestions. Yeah. All right, well, I, I, I think that's all we can offer on that one. We just don't have any further control on of what he's doing or what that board is doing, that, that uh, group is doing. So, but good luck with that, and we appreciate your advocacy. Um, Thank you. I'll ask if there's any other public. Uh, a question for Kathy on the process. Sure. So, so it comes to, our board and Parks and Rec, and, and then we recommend to the City Council, but does it have to clear us first in, in that we either come down on we approve as a group or we don't? Can it be continued and not go up to the City Council? Can we delay it if we say we just haven't gotten an agreement and there's enough angst across a couple members and we continue this? It, will it continue with us? Or does it go, or does it, is, there, is there just, we have one meeting, we have to decide, and there's a timetable, and that's it, and we recommend something, and it's going to the city council by a certain date? My expectation right now is that it will come to you in February and then come back to you in April. Um, with any petition, if, if you feel you need more information, when it comes back to you in April, you could continue the matter. And, and it wouldn't go to the city council for approval? If well, I don't we, think we can control to. that. It's not a. It's a. It's a city. It's city council's choice to whether they want to bring something to their agenda or not. If it's not something that requires a prior action, it's a recommendation. So they could always, I, I believe. I I think if the commission has in in April, um, in in February, I would encourage you to identify any information you yeah. want yeah. to put any issues out there that need to be refined or resolved. Um, if in April you feel that they're, they're, they weren't responsive, um, I think you would have a legitimate reason to say we're still looking for this piece of information. Yeah. If the commission continued it uh, month after month after month for, for a significant period, uh, mm -hmm. then I would expect perhaps the matter would, would simply be put on the council agenda. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, look here, this is um, an, an interesting process and the last time that we, um, uh, heard a presentation from the planning group. There was a uh, difference of opinion amongst the planning group as mm -hmm. to the direction on certain landscape features, certain elements of the plan, walls, positions, things like that. I think we gave them good input at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they've been collecting input from the community. Um, I'm a little bit discouraged to hear that there's not a dialogue going on now with uh, between you folks, but I would encourage that dialogue as opposed to drawing lines in the sand about who's going to put what in writing at what time before we're going to meet. You know, this sounds very um, 
it sounds like a very familiar Middle East problem, but uh, <laughs> at any rate, um, uh, I, you know, I'm confident that we'll see a plan that's been rehatched for us based on all the input that they've uh, that they've heard, and you know, then we'll rule, you know, then we'll give them our opinion then, and that's yeah. about all I can do about it. I can't tell them, you know, make sure you talk to everybody any more than we did. So mm -hmm. my uh, sense is they're open to suggestions. Also, I, I mean, they, they certainly seem very seem responsive like at the time. Yeah. At the, yeah, at the joint presentation, and although they may not be communicating to the level that Ms. Falcone wants them to, to do, I, 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 I think they're, you know, that, that at some point, you know, the concerns will be addressed either at the commission level well, or if I, the project. Well, if I were on the other board. side of the, of the equation and I were responsible for the planning, I would, I would be a little wary of Communicating specifics of a plan that isn't published. Yeah, right. Well, that's until in, that's it's published. In, absolutely. <laughs> right. until, until because it's probably to. being still discussed. <laughs> I agree with you. So, yeah, that, that, uh, and that could be yeah. simply what, what yeah. what's happening at yeah. this point. Yeah. So. so. Uh, at any rate, I do want to, uh, given the late hour, I, I, I don't think we can offer any further uh, kind of guidance with respect to that issue. We have one more agenda item, um, and that is, is we have a, a, a meeting schedule for 2012 that I believe needs to be uh, approved. Is that correct, Kathy? So I'll take, um, it's uh, included in your packet. I don't know if there's any questions <coughs> with respect to the schedule itself, uh, if there are. January date's okay with me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> The, the March date has changed from the regular fourth meeting date um, due to spring break. Spring break, yeah. Um, we have uh, suggested that the August and December meetings be canceled, um, but that's your option. We're all for August that. August and yeah. September. Oh, December. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, December. Maybe to make up for okay. last year when we met twice and three in, times, three September. times in yeah. August. Yeah. <laughs> we um, preserve the right to schedule additional <laughs> meetings. <September. laughs> <laughs> November. We should put it a condition on our approval. No additional yeah. meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I have a motion to approve the uh, 2012 meeting date schedule and submittal deadlines. So moved. So moved by Commissioner Athenson. Seconded. Seconded by Commissioner Ransom. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that carries as well. Um, cheers. I believe that's it. So now I'll take a motion to adjourn. Do we have any so other moved. Oh, let's see. Do we have any other city announcements? You've done for this, huh? So moved. So a motion to adjourn is made by Commissioner Preschleck, seconded by Commissioner Ransom. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you and good evening.